Three, two, one. Whoa. Hey guys, welcome to EB Games. This is Sardonicast. Does anybody remember that <laughs> shitty commercial? I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, I remember when it was me. Yeah. yeah. I'm Adam from Your Movie Sucks. I'm Ralph from YouTube.com slash Ralph the Movie Maker. And I'm Alex from IHE. And thanks for that intro, Adam. That was awesome. <laughs> You're nice welcome. In the past. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not even that old. What was that, like five years ago or something? Five years is a long time. Yeah, that's old now. It's not really in the grand scheme of things, man. In the world of memes, though. Okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> How was your guys' weeks? Good. I went to Disneyland. Yeah. That was fun. Oh, yeah? Disneyland? Yeah. They're building a Star Wars park area. They're building a... God, what else do they own? Avengers. Yeah. <laughs> They're doing all kinds of shit. <laughs> yeah, everything they own. Are they doing, like, Zootopia shit there yet? Or not? Um, there's like a few Zootopia characters walking around. Yeah, like to but they don't have like with. a Zootopia themed park or anything, which I no. think would do Why? well. Why you want to go to a Zootopia park? Nah, they maybe. <laughs> I, I know a lot of people that would like to. They have a Cars one. The Cars one. <laughs> oh the yeah, the Cars one is actually really cool. The the okay. movie sucked, but like the 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 park itself was really well done. Okay, yeah, I'll and give I'm you like, that wow, much. if this was a good movie, if I liked Cars, this would be awesome. But I went I went no. to Disneyland uh, a few years ago because I was in LA just for some other things that I was doing, and um, uh -huh. I was supposed to go with a friend, and they they canceled on me because of some family emergency, and it was like the last day I was in LA, so I was like, ah, you know what, screw it, I'm going by myself. And I did it, and I had so much fun nice. by myself. I just brought plenty of booze <laughs> and, <laughs> and and bought tickets to both of the parks, like the Disneyland and the whatever adventure. Great. California thing. Adventure. Yeah. yeah. And I managed to hit up like every single ride I wanted to because I found out that as a single rider, you can skip a lot of the lines because there will be some yeah. You some have your own like, line oh, right. yeah. of just single riders. Yeah. Yeah. Because like a lot of the rides, it's like families and... Yeah, there'll there'll be a ride where they need like four people to fill it up, and then there's like groups of three and two mm. and four at the front. Exactly. So they're like, okay, we're looking for a single and then rider. You, hop on. <laughs> so you just get to go up there. And then for the rides that didn't do that, there were some that were like the lines were like way too long, and I was like, ah, you know what? Screw that. I'll just come back later. And then I stayed there the whole day until <laughs> like pretty much everything <laughs> was closing. It was like nighttime. It was like 11 p.m. And I managed to hit up those rides anyway because there was nobody there anymore. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. There's so many great rides Life there. hack for us. Yeah. And it was super fun because I had watched uh, Escape from Tomorrow. And so every location that they used in that film, oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, man, <laughs> this isn't the happiest place on earth. And it was really, it was, it was <laughs> a whole range of emotions. And I ended the day at the ESPN sports bar and ate a uh, incredibly disgusting Philly cheesesteak sandwich. <laughs> You should have gone to Ralph Brennan's. I don't know it's what like, that it's is. It's like a New Orleans. Yeah, it's like that? some New Orleans kind of themed restaurant. It's very good. Okay. That was in downtown Disney. Yeah, there's so many good restaurants in downtown Disney. I, I, I think I might have been there earlier in the day, but the sports center was the only thing left open at that point. And I was like, you know oh, what? Fuck okay. it. I'm in America. I'm going to get the most disgusting American thing that I can. And I did. <laughs> and you love like, it. Like uh, a... California Adventure used to suck, though. It's way mm -hmm. better now, but it used to be, like, carnival-themed. Oh. And it had, like, carnival-themed rides. And it, now it's, like, all Pixar and, you know, Incredibles and <laughs> Inside Out. But, like, before, it was just, like, a carnival. And it's like, why would I pay $150 to just go to a carnival? Because you can drink beer on that side. <laughs> I they guess. They actually did have the there. Food and Wine Festival. That was delicious. So, like, ever I think mm -hmm. a few weeks out of the year, they do, like, a... A food and wine festival where they oh. just give you wine and actually good food, not just like total like chicken wings or whatever, <laughs> whatever the fuck <laughs> you usually get there. Those giant turkey legs that are disgusting, <laughs> but they're really good. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I had a great time there. <laughs> nice. Have you been, Alex, to Disney? I went once in the early 2000s and I can barely remember it. And that was Disneyland, well, not Disney one? World? Um... Which city California, were you in? California, I think it was. Okay, then Disneyland. California. Was, yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that the worst one? No. I, I like that one the best. It's like the smallest. Disney World is way bigger. Exactly. It's I want to do a Disney life. World trip. Yeah. 
Disney World is okay. awesome. We should all go to Disney yeah, World. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> I've been saying this. <laughs> we, we need to okay. do a Sardonicast Disney World trip. <laughs> Whenever you're not so busy with They school, have their own, like, it. bus transit system. It's, like, one of the largest in the country. That's yeah. how fucking really? big it is. <laughs> wow. There's, like, 20 hotels and, like, seven parks, two water parks. I it's insane. It, I was there when I was a lot it's younger. It's insane. And so I only retained so mm. much of it because I was young, but I think I was, like, 13. Hmm. But... I remember it was huge. Yeah. I was going to say, uh, when you it's mentioned so cool. uh, chicken wings, I don't know if you've noticed, Ralph, but chicken wings in America are, are like Frankenstein chicken wings. They're so much bigger. They're ridiculous. Yeah. I don't know what Is they do to Is it smaller them. in other countries? Even... Yeah. Do you just have huge chickens there or something? I think, I think they just pump we them just full of hormones. We just put a bunch of chemicals in our chickens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> they were like super We pump our fruits. chickens full of shit to They're make monsters. them monsters. It's insane. I just like the chicken wings from 7-Eleven are like as big as my hand. Really? That's how we like well, it. Like maybe half the size yeah, of my hand, up, but man. like <laughs> I've got big hands, so it's, you know. <laughs> uh, speaking of America, the Star Wars trailer is, this is out. Disney. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we were talking about Disney. It's a, it's a perfect segue. Hey, God I just woke it. up, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all right. You can't get it every time. It's fine. Yeah. But yeah, Disney, they released, uh, what, a Star Wars trailer? Yeah, that's Episode one of them. Nine. One? What's it called? The yeah. the Skywalker Rises? Oh, the yeah. Skywalker, it does it? have a the, terrible the title, doesn't pretty... it? <laughs> yeah. uh. She did a flip. What is it actually called? I can't remember. <laughs> I think I think it's Rise called. of the Rise Skywalker. Of Skywalker. Oh, okay, there we go. Right? The I don't Rise think it matters. Skywalker. <laughs> the Rise okay. of Skywalker. Whatever. Oh my god. <laughs> no, I think it's the rise of the Skywalker. No, the rise of Skywalker. The rise of the Skywalker? What? Uh, the rise of the skyscraper. <laughs> we're, we're talking about the title for like a minute. <laughs> I don't know. It's called it's the important. rise of Skywalker. Okay. <laughs> what did you think of it though? All I remember from the trailer is that she did a flip. And I guess they're trying to bring back Skywalker. As in, yeah, yeah, that's kind of all that happened yeah. in the trailer. They're trying well, to Kylo bring Ren back was Mark gluing Hamill. his mask back together, right? That happened. Well, it's like damage control for the Last Jedi, the movie. Yeah, it's like a perfect metaphor for like JJ trying to fix what, <laughs> what Ryan it's Johnson so funny. did. Just going yeah, against each other I every movie. I uh, my impression was that they were trying to make each of these new trilogy films kind of be specialized towards the characters from the originals but just one per movie so the first one was like harrison ford and then the second one was mark mm -hmm. hamill and the third one was i think supposed to be carrie fisher but then she died yeah that's right so i yeah. think this might turn into another dark knight rises situation where they kind of have to rewrite because they weren't expecting mm -hmm. a, a death of of somebody that they were yeah, supposed no, to feature prominently in in the movie so that might be the only reason why Mark Hamill's coming back. Maybe. Well, Lando is in it, right? Oh yeah. Lando, Lando might be that yeah. that role. Yeah. And it helps it it, it doubles up for them cuz they can sort of backpedal on the previous movie and have Luke be in it a bit more. Yeah. Yeah. But did you hear <laughs> what they actually did with um Carrie Fisher and how they having her in the movie? It's quite oh. weird. No. This is confirmed. What is, no, it's what's like, happening? Yeah, it's confirmed. They've already like confirmed what they're doing. Um, they're using unused like shots from episode seven. Nice. They've, like written the script around stuff they'd already recorded, so they're not doing the Rogue One CGing thing. Okay. Super curious what they're gonna do with that, because that must yeah. be really limiting based on what they would have shot. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I, don't I don't know about that. <laughs> that sounds a little fishy. No pun intended. It's usually pretty distracting and obvious. And like like a uh, Fast and Furious Seven, not a bad movie by any stretch of the imagination. But when the Paul Walker scenes, it was kind of you could tell it was either CG oh, yeah, sure. or it was like a shot that was repurposed like to something else. Yeah, played him yeah. And they CG'd over his face. Yeah, yeah, I heard yeah, about that, but too. I never saw There's it. There's a few movies. I kind of like want that. to. Uh, the Sopranos, they did that too. They CG'd like Tony's mother in when she, when the oh, actress really? passed away. Yeah. Yeah. They were talking about doing that for uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman in The Hunger Games, but then they didn't. Yeah. Well, I, I don't. It was a good call. Like, it's a tricky thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. It depends. Unfortunate for them. We'll see. Mm -hmm. 
I don't really have much to say about Star Wars, honestly. <laughs> I just figured we should mention it. Yeah, yeah, I don't have much to say about this either. I mean, it's like, it just looks like another good. one of the probably won't be Star Wars movies from Disney. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of yeah. as simple as that. Like she one. did a flip. Yeah, she did yeah. a flip. I'm sure the new Kylo Ren ship will sell lots of toys. Yeah. Speaking the of end. Disney, <laughs> Disney, uh, <laughs> The Lion King has a new trailer. <laughs> oh my go. god! And it's fucking you awful. Liked it, didn't you? It's fucking <laughs> terrible, <laughs> and it makes me very upset. You know, I was I was trying to reserve my judgment for the fact that they don't have Jeremy Irons reprising his role, even though they still have James Earl Jones. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> Mr. Great Actor from 12 Years a Slave, whose name I can't properly pronounce. He, <laughs> I, I love him in 12 Years a Slave. He, he does an amazing job playing an empathetic character. But yeah. he fucking sucks trying to play a, a villain lion. It's so bad. <laughs> I cannot believe it. It's terrible. The more footage they release, Seth the, the worse it gets. Seth Rogen is the piggy. I did not like the trailer. Yeah, yeah. it's bad. It's, it's just there was awful. no. I, I got no expressions from them at all. They were not expressive even Such remotely. A huge and I know issue. we talked about this before, oh, yeah. but it's a really big problem in this trailer because this is more of like a story trailer where I'm supposed to empathize with like characters and, and yeah. get what's going on. And I really was just not on board at all. It's impossible. And then I watched to be. like the trailer wow. for the old Lion I King, mean. and like those characters are like so fucking expressive. So. Yeah, big eyes, <sighs> big smiling mouths. Yeah, you can really mm -hmm. tell. You can pause the screen and know everything that that character's feeling because of the animation. Yeah. And then try I doing mean, we've that said this, this so much. Yeah, <laughs> it's like yeah. we're beating a dead horse. But seriously, it's so bad. Yeah, like I cannot fucking watch a whole movie of this. It's and it crazy. Like it's, it's almost a shot for shot remake too. They're not even. Yeah, it's not their own interpretation. It's just a worse, uglier looking version than the original movie. Yeah, because <laughs> the original movie is already the it. perfect version of it, probably. Y yeah, I mean, yeah. I Ralph still <laughs> hasn't seen it, I guess. But <laughs> I will watch from, it before from this his new imagination. One. <laughs> Get the 4K Blu-ray if you have a 4K setup. It looks right. actually great. I, you're right. You're right. I will do that. I don't know if you guys noticed, but they never showed any of the characters' mouths moving. All of the voiceover, all of the dialogue, was just from one scene and then placed on top of another of like action that leads me to yeah. believe oh, yeah. that the characters when they're speaking probably look ridiculous because why not show that why not show that in your new trailer the Did movie's coming the, out in like two or three months book? i haven't seen that yet i know it's the same director because i i assume it will look similar to that and the way they made the animals talk in that yeah i still i still haven't seen it but i doubt that one will piss me off as much as this one because I'm not like a huge Jungle Book fan in the first place. Yeah, uh, the Jungle Book movie was surprisingly all right. It's going to yeah. age horribly, but yeah. whatever. It's just <laughs> yeah, a Jungle Book story. Things. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't really recommend it, but I can see why some people do f might fall for it. Yeah, I'm wondering if yeah. they're like no trying to fix the characters' mouth movements within the three months before it's released. Maybe, it maybe they got they a complaint about that. that. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe it screens. looks fine. Maybe the movie is going to be great. How do we know? We haven't even seen it yet. How do you know a movie is going to be bad based on the footage that they release? <laughs> nah. Right. Oh, I hate that argument so much. You went in wanting to hate it. <laughs> Whenever somebody tries to say that, I'm like, okay, do you, do you need to watch the Emoji movie to know it's bad? Or can you tell based <laughs> off of the promotional footage that this might not be the film for you and that you're not interested? Or just the background behind it. It's like, okay, so a bunch of producers are marketing this to children to promote, like to, I guess, bank off the emoji craze or whatever the fuck. Like, yeah, I want to watch emoji a movie craze. made because of that. Mm -hmm. It's like it's no. getting a sequel, I think. Oh, uh, of course it will, because it made money. Yeah, but, you know, movies should come from a creative place. Because everybody <laughs> saw it ironically. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, I didn't. Thanks, Jax Films. Thanks, Alex. <laughs> oh, yeah. You too. <laughs> yeah, man. I had a great time going there. <laughs> I'm glad you did. I, I was planning on watching uh, the new Lion King, like hate watching it just to, you know, mm. experience pain. But uh, I don't think I yeah. can. I don't think I can anymore. I think on the day really? of the release of the new Lion King, I'm just going to pop in my 4K Blu-ray of the good movie. And then... 
once it makes a billion dollars and I had nothing to do with it, then I can say, fine, I wasn't a part of the problem. I'm going to get the home video release and then I'm going to tear it to shreds, but I'm not going to fucking see it in theaters. That's my plan. Okay, that's fair. All right. Well, well how about when Lion King comes out, we watch the animated one and talk about it? How about we well, I guess it, it depends whose turn it is to recommend, but I guess we could do that either way if we want to commit to it. Yeah, yeah we can. Ralph, you haven't seen, seen it. Long time. I could watch that movie at any yeah, point I in time. Seen it. You guys have seen it. But yeah, sure. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, it's a new deal. One look good. We'll have to Sounds remember. Like good. Got him. Yeah, when's right, it even coming what? out? Uh, June or July? Oh. <laughs> one of <laughs> those question. two months? Okay. Not July too far. 19th. Okay. So, yeah, we'll July figure 19th. it out. There you go. Okay. Something to look forward to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just, I, it's, I can't believe just how poorly <laughs> they did everything <laughs> that we can see hey, in the we'll trailer, see. at least. It's just. W- walk so in with an open mind. Yeah. I know that I know it looks bad, but we got to walk in with an open mind and sit there and go, "Okay, I want to enjoy this. I paid for it. Let's enjoy it." Yeah, but I won't pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I I'll pay for it on VOD probably. I'll watch it at some point. Are you guys seeing uh, Endgame? Did you get your tickets? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I'll be oh, seeing it. I'm seeing it in the the Cinerama dome. Yeah, I got so my tickets like 2 weeks ago, like the, the pretty much the day that they announced them. And like the oh, the okay. f- first the whole day was sold out. <laughs> so I'm seeing it on usually I would see it on the Thursday, but I see it on the Friday now. You have to book that far ahead. It depends what kind of yeah. uh, place you live. So if you live in a city where there's lots of people that want to see movies, then uh, you might have to book really far in ad- advance. And this is the Avengers Endgame, right? So they they sell their tickets way further in advance than any other movie right now. Usually, oh, if you're going to buy advanced tickets for something, that. it's like a week before. But movies like this, they sell them way oh, early. Oh, because it's such an event, yeah. yeah. There's also the reserved seating, too. So you want to get it early, so you get a good seat. Is that how it works when you guys go to the theater? Like, you have to reserve the seat beforehand, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, depending okay, on the yeah. theater, yeah. but... <laughs> yeah, most Yeah, I guess some like small seating. art house ones don't really. But, yeah. Did you guys uh, hear about the... Um, they're doing like a 22-hour... MCU marathon in some theaters. I did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Crazy. Oh my lord. I think you win something if you like <laughs> sit through the whole thing. What? It's like you get a prize. <laughs> what do you win? <laughs> Either like money or like I without gotta, like, going to the bathroom. <laughs> like without yeah, if you just well, I guess you could go to the bathroom, but if you just sit through the whole fucking thing, you bring a bottle. <laughs> they're like, congrats. <laughs> yeah, they give you like a big check. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what they you do. You bring but... a catheter, then you're fine. <laughs> yeah. Surely that would be like 40 hours long, right? If it's every Marvel movie. <laughs> yeah. Aren't there like 20 of them? And they're all, they're all at least two hours long. I think, I don't, I don't know. They, they have like a special lineup. <laughs> I don't know which ones are included because there's no fucking way I would go to that. So I think they said it was like 20 something hours. So I don't know exactly how many or which films okay. are in it. It could maybe be all they of left them. Out maybe four just, two I don't know. Ant-Man. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's they like left out some of the hours. less important ones. And yeah, they give you a thousand bucks if you sit through the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that would be funny, but yeah. no way. They don't yeah, that's crazy. Bucks. They pay you to see it. <laughs> it's just your your ticket yeah. is comped. I mean, it's just it's so much. Yeah, basically, <laughs> that's all that happens. Your ticket Weird. and your food. If you wear sunglasses, they can't tell if you're asleep. That's true. <laughs> Speaking of superhero movies. I did it this time. Uh, we all watched Shazam. <laughs> Shazam. Wow, that was a great segue. Yeah. I'm back you on track. Shazam. Shazam. Yeah. Shazam! What'd you guys think of it? I really liked it. You just went <gasps> in wanting to like it, Adam. You liked the DC movie? Yeah. Yeah, I did. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed myself while I was watching it. And uh, I thought that oh, it. Well, I did too. It was very reminiscent of like the playful, kind of carefree tone of uh, the Raimi Spider-Man movies, which we've talked about thoroughly on this podcast. Yeah, not it as good. Me of Spider-Man a lot. I think Spider-Man's no. better <laughs> but, in many ways, but yeah, like it, it's it's reminiscent enough, and it's it's like mm-hmm. it reminds me that yes, I would like to see superhero movies that just don't take themselves nearly as seriously. It's a it's a comic mm-hmm. book thing, you know. Like you shouldn't. I don't know. It's I guess it's a preference thing, but like I I I would much rather see a superhero 
movie where things aren't super, super serious the whole time. And that's the impression I get from a lot mm-hmm. of Marvel movies, even though diehard Marvel fans will say like, oh, yeah, but it tries to be goofy, too. It's like, yeah, there's moments of comedic relief. But overall, the tone is like, you know, this dumb drama between Captain America and Iron Man and global politics. And yeah, there's yada, other yada, stuff. Yada. And they're all connected. So they have to introduce other characters and that stuff. It's a chore. I guess Shazam. Yeah, it's in the same universe as the other DC stuff, which makes no sense at all, considering yeah. its tone. But like, it doesn't have anything to do with that shit. And it barely mentions it. It only uses it for comedy, mostly. Yeah. And I like that about it a lot, too. They don't really try to connect it in in any way other than just saying like, hey, superheroes exist in this world. Batman and Superman exist. Yeah. But we're not going to say which versions. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's a little cameo at the end from somebody who, and they don't get the the real actor who plays them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> no one wants to be part of the For many anymore. reasons. <laughs> yeah. Originally, there was way more in that scene, but they cut it short. Because, you know, the actor didn't show up. I actually like that better, but... That's funny. <laughs> yeah. That is yeah. actually much funnier. What do you think, no, Alex? I came out of the theater um, with one adjective in my head when it finished, and that was nice. It was just nice. <laughs> <laughs> it was like... Yeah. It, it didn't annoy me really in any way, but it also didn't particularly impress me majorly mm-hmm. in any way. It was just, mm-hmm. yep, yeah, all of this is pretty good. There was some a, a couple surprising moments with... I won't spoil anything, but kind of a terrifying scene <laughs> that I wasn't expecting in what I thought would be kind of a tame superhero movie where like mm-hmm. characters they were getting like slaughtered in front of my eyes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> Which I really wasn't expecting. <laughs> it was and brutal. going yeah, I it reminded me of, you know, the Sam Raimi Spider Man movies as you were saying. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I just thought it was yeah. nice. It was playful. I didn't really find it that funny, but it, it wasn't annoying to me. It was just sort of cute. It was cute and nice and it had family values and I did notice it was weirdly, <laughs> weirdly similar to uh, Kung Fu Panda 2. <laughs> it had wholesome I, everything family comes values. Back to, the, to DreamWorks animated movies for you. <laughs> no, I'm not Everyone. joking. This isn't actually trying to wedge in some kind of DreamWorks agenda. <laughs> okay. Like, I'm, ser- I'm serious. They, they have paid. the same themes. They even have, No, I'm not. I'm, I'm not paid. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, that's the same themes. The, the main characters about trying to like figure out where he belongs and what happened to his parents, like in the. The villain setup's very similar, and even the mm-hmm. joke at the end, right before the final fight, is identical. And the I, I could keep going forever. I'm going to stop now. Mm-hmm. But trust me, <laughs> people be- people believe me, and I'm correct. I believe you. I believe you. We're going to do a side by side comparison. <laughs> um, I do love it. the villain of this, the, or not? Oh yeah. I, okay, love is a strong word. Okay. But like considering the rest of these DC villains, it was actually like a a villain with a motivation. And I understood what he was doing. And I thought Mark Strong actually had a lot of fun with the role. So what did you guys think of that? I um I, I I didn't feel like the villain was out of place. I didn't love him. I didn't hate him. Yeah. I... But he <laughs> he served his purpose and he was like intimidating enough to be a villain. Like mm-hmm. uh he was kinda he was kinda goofy in some senses. Yeah. You but know. he actually was He's like a good foil yeah. to to the lead. Like he wasn't just like a villain they threw in from the comic books. He yeah. had like a, a like a tragic childhood too, and they had like you know parallels in that way. Except he went off and became a villain with that. It was like, oh okay, yeah, that's I like, like that. a clever thing that happened. <laughs> so I give them props for that too. It's not he didn't want to blow up the universe or whatever. I agree with Alex no when reason. he says it's like a cartoon. And in many Mm -hmm. other superhero films, a very cartoonish villain or cartoonish anything else would kind of bother me because it's kind of contradictory and conflicting with the tones that the film is setting out to be. But this movie is basically just trying to be a cartoonish movie in general. And so it fits. Mm -hmm. I think it works Mm -hmm. really well. Yeah, I thought Mark Strong was good. I thought he was really what made that character a bit more memorable. I think if a Mm -hmm. lesser actor was playing that very same role, it could have just been kind of generic and lame, but he did embody it quite well and added some personality Mm to it. Zachary Levi does a great job imitating the younger version of himself, Mm -hmm. and other characters go through similar things, (laughs) and they do a good job as well. There's a lot of that going on, uh, imitating younger child actors. The movie had a good hook. 
Like the mm-hmm. the adult who's like got the brain of a child, basically. It's <laughs> yeah. just a fun, fresh, comedic way to put a spin on the thing we've seen time and time again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's very immature with work. his powers. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But now he's kind of learnt. So I don't know where they're going to go in future, but... We'll yeah, see. who knows how a sequel would be. But I, I really did appreciate that not only did they use that kind of concept to the best of its abilities, like they put careful thought into what type of scenarios would be entertaining to see in a film given that mm-hmm. concept. And they mm-hmm. didn't go way too far with it because in many superhero movie- movies, even ones that try to be more comedic, it winds up turning into this whole like, oh no, like got to save the whole universe and things wind up getting like artificially serious anyway. And although there is seriousness mm-hmm. to it, I love that like this overall scale of what the conflict was in this film was really just centered around his family. Like, even when it came to, like, yeah. villains, like, without spoiling anything, even when it came to, like, the greater conflicts in the film, it was still just centered around this smaller scale idea of his family. And I love that it didn't mm-hmm. overreach and go way too far out of what would be realistic in terms of relatable conflicts for, like, a 14-year-old. Because at the end of the day, like, like yeah. that's what it's supposed to be. Yeah. The action at the end wasn't too excessive either which is usually the case with a lot of these movies. It still went on a bit too long, honestly. Yeah, I'd, I'll admit. But, that last like, it was at a carnival. Movie. It was just like, you know, they fight in a carnival. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. It was simple. I never found it went on too long, personally. No, I was and they're, like, the saving time. people. There's, like, a lot of variety to it, too. There's a lot of stuff going on. It's not just, like, punching through buildings and, <laughs> like, just over and over. Mm-hmm. No, the reason it works is because Shazam is such a stupid character. Like, he's so dumb. <laughs> but they embrace the silliness and make it work. And kind of the yeah. fish out of water thing is, is fun to watch. And make him very likable. And I was actually yeah. invested in him and his family and where the story was going. So even though all this goofy shit is going on, I was actually interested. Yeah, they made Shazam a better Superman than their own Superman in the universe. He's like, save yeah. more people. He's more heroic. He's more relatable. He doesn't hate doing what he's doing. <laughs> it's just really funny that Shazam, out of all of the DC characters, is the one they've kind of got right. Shazam. They can't get Batman or Superman right. Uh, excuse me, but Batman and Superman are exactly how they're supposed to be. Wake the fuck up. Get real. I'm Zack Snyder. Uh, did you see that? We didn't talk <laughs> about Zack that, Snyder did we? fans say that. Oh, my God. That was so insulting to read. Oh Batman God, kills Zack people. Snyder. Wake the fuck up. <laughs> Did the Batman versus Superman crowd like this? Do you think? Or do you uh, think they hated it? They're like, oh, we want Zack Snyder back. We want the dark stuff back. That was when the the movies were intelligent. They were made for smart people. Is there a Batman v Superman crowd? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there is. I no, guess so. There's a huge crowd. I don't know any no, of them. <laughs> that film has fans. I, I don't either, but still. How do we know they're real? <laughs> they're real. <laughs> Trust me. They're out there. They will be in the comments. They are out there. Believe it or not. <laughs> Watch out for them. Hide your children. They're out there. And they'll show your kids Batman vs. Superman. Keep them away. Did you like how when Snyder was talking about his response, he seemed really personally upset by the fan response to Batman killing people? So he Mm -hmm. was like, why don't you get out of your basement sometimes and make out with a hot chick, you nerds? That was his, like, (laughs) response. (laughs) Yeah. What are you talking about? You're like... The reason they're annoyed is because you betrayed the character and everything he stands for. Batman's like yeah. most recognizable trait that sets him apart from his enemies is the fact he won't kill. <laughs> and it's just like such a huge part of your movie that you never address. How's that unfair <laughs> to call out as a fan? Yeah, it's a pretty innocent question to begin with, too. Like, if you can defend it, then defend it. But there's no reason to yeah. be such an asshole about it. <laughs> to insult your fan yeah, base. He yeah, he got very defensive about that. <laughs> Wake the fuck uh. up. What was his exact <laughs> quote? I kind of want to read it. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah, find it. It yeah. is funny. Get out of your bedroom, you nerds. Really, Ralph should read it in his Zack Snyder voice. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to... Let's see. Wake the fuck up! <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's what he said. <laughs> oh, Lord. Yeah, he says fuck a lot. Yeah. No, he's pissed. 
He is pissed. My heroes didn't fucking lie to America. My heroes didn't embezzle money from their corporations. <laughs> what? But you're living in a fucking dream world. <laughs> That's what he's saying. He sounds like a crazy person. Is this him? Sounds like a crackpot. Yeah. yeah, he said, wake the fuck up. Yeah. Once you've lost your virginity you to this it. fucking movie, and then you come and say to me something about, <laughs> like, my superhero wouldn't do that. Like, I, I are you serious? <laughs> I'm, like, down the fucking road on that. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> what is he talking about? <laughs> He's an actual oh nonsense. God. Oh, Zack. Oh, dear. Oh, Zack Snyder. But Shazam, yeah, that was pretty good. It wasn't <laughs> yeah. nearly as... Because he had nothing to do with it. ...epic as Aquaman, but... No, I watched it again. Oh, my God, it's so much better the second time. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah, I, I can't wait what, to see Aquaman that. or Shazam? No, Aquaman. <laughs> Aquaman. Shazam. Aquaman, yeah. Yeah, Aquaman yeah. for me is still best DC movie. The most epic movie? Oh, you think Aquaman is still better than us? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm... Dude. Nah. Nah, I'll just go on an Aquaman rant and how good it is again. Yeah, I can't maybe that maybe I'll rewatch it. I uh, I think Shazam is a better movie, in my opinion, but I think I would sooner oh, watch okay. Aquaman again. No way. Come on. It's yeah, epic. That film's funny. This movie, Shazam was it's way epic. funnier than Aquaman. Are you I sure? I thought the no, scene where Shazam Aquaman's got... way funnier. <laughs> no, no, no. The scene Aquaman's where Shazam funnier. like uh, stopped the robbery, that was hilarious. No, was, there's like, plenty of good... Intentionally I mean, hilarious. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> in terms of intent with comedy, Shazam does a better job, yeah. but Aquaman is funnier, in my opinion. Yes. Way funnier. I'm more entertaining. Sure, but I respect the craft of like crafting a scene that's funny. What about crafting a scene that's epic? <laughs> yeah, I, I respect that craft. <laughs> yeah, and that's what, yeah. What's his, who was the director of that? James Wan. Uh, yeah, Furious uh, 7 James himself. Wan. Yeah. yeah. He, he just Saw. made the Fast and Furious of the DC universe, and it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Dead silence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's, how, that's my opinion on James Wan as a director. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you said earlier Fast 7 is incredible. Uh, it's not an awful movie. <laughs> That's the one Adam would like, I bet. Yeah, for a Fast and Furious movie, I think it's one of the better ones. Okay. Yeah. It's like Aquaman. It's just so absurd. <laughs> okay. Cars yeah, I can see that. Through skyscrapers. And I think that they parachute yeah. with cars in that one. <laughs> yeah, it has its moments for sure. There are lots of great moments. Yeah. <laughs> That's the one with the opening, cha with the opening race, right? Where... Like the, no, the car's like a the piece opening of shit is this, and he has to blow up the engine. No, it's, oh no, that's it's eight. got an amazing opening. Seven has an amazing opening with opening? Jason Statham like <laughs> in the hospital with like this oh, musical yeah. instrument. That's a great opening. It's so <laughs> He fucking blows up the whole hospital, right? Yeah. And it's like slowly well, revealed as he walks out from his brother. His like brothers <laughs> in hospital. And he's like, I'll avenge you. And then he leaves. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, I think one day I will watch through all of them. But I don't know. Some of them are painful. I I know that much. Yeah, I know that much. Yeah, they're they're a weak one. Tokyo Drift, um, mm -hmm. the fourth one's pretty boring. My favorite's like five. Mm -hmm. Two is hilarious. Also, two has a lot of um gay undertones. That's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> I've never seen two. Here's a challenge. You should watch two. Mm -hmm. Can you name okay. all of the Fast and Furious titles? Go. Yes. Holy shit. Can you? So Alex? the first one's just Fast and Furious, right? No, no, no. The first one's The Fast and the Furious. Yes. The Fast and the Furious. Then it's Fast and Furious? Too Fast, Too Furious. Yes. Oh, of course. But then it's Tokyo Jeff, right? Yeah. Fast yes. and Furious, Tokyo, Tokyo Drift. Drift. Okay. I keep then... hearing text notifications on someone's phone. I don't know who that is. But... Uh, not me. <laughs> it ain't mine. Is it yours? Oh, yeah? oh maybe it's my phone. Oh, what what the... fuck? Maybe it's mine. <laughs> Turn off your phone, Ralph. <laughs> no, it was only twice. Yeah, okay. it was only twice. Uh, yeah, okay. It was like sorry. He tried to blame someone else uh, for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's one of you fuckers, aren't you? Because <laughs> I just heard it. I'm sorry. I thought it was one. I thought it was coming. All right, whatever. what's the fourth one? Um, we're up to the fourth one. What's the fourth one? T uh, no, Fast Four. No, I think the fourth one is just <laughs> Fast and no, Furious. No, it's just. Go ahead. Okay. That yeah, was just that fast one's fast yeah, that's what they usually okay. do with the fourth film in a franchise. They just add a or take yeah, away yeah. a the. Yeah. Then it's Fast Five. Yep. It's just called Fast Five. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. Then it's okay. Furious Six. Yep. Oh no, it's Fast <laughs> and Furious Six. I'm Fast, sorry. Fast, and, Fast Furious and Furious Six, and then Furious Seven, I think. And then Furious Seven. Furious Seven. Wow. And then the Fate of the Furious. Yep. <laughs> the fate of the Furious, because because it sounds like eight. Fate. Yeah, eight. Smart. Yeah, fate. That's smart. Fate. F eight. Fate. That's the it. Great eighth title. Film in the franchise. That's that's how they marketed it. They just put F eight. Yeah. And it's like fate. <laughs> It's so good. It was genius. Okay. It's so yeah. good. <laughs> Charlie Theron okay. is a super hacker in that movie who hacks into every car in, in New York yeah. City and, and tries to kill people with it. It's awesome. That's an absurd scene. <laughs> <laughs> We've definitely incorporated that uh, exact piece of trivia into a drinking game, <laughs> and it was really, really funny. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um Anything more to say about Shazam? I really thought that the acting was uh, pretty pretty good, except for some of the kids, uh, but not yeah, the main kids. I, I think the main the kids. kids did a pretty good job. Yeah, especially Which Freddy. Helps a lot. Whoever plays oh, yeah. Freddy. Freddy's great. Yeah. Freddy's probably best character. I really did like that the... You know, although some of the children in the foster home are a little annoying, you know, I, I got over it quickly because yeah, of its whole yeah. cartoonish vibe, but... I thought that the foster parents, the characters there, like they were really, really likable. And it wasn't like yeah, they were. super cheesy. That's what I mean. It's and, just nice. Yeah. It was nice to watch. <laughs> like you, you could understand why the character would care for them. Or like it, it's mm -hmm. you as an audience member care for them already. It's like, oh, wow, these are lovely, really nice, respectful people. And it doesn't yeah. feel like super forced. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Yeah. When so many movies a don't healthy, do that, happy household. and then a movie finally does it, and it's like, oh, that's what it's like again. How did you guys that's feel like about feel the something? the special effects in the movie? Because you know, some of these DC movies, they're kind of infamous for how bad the the CG is. Like Wonder Woman has some atrocious special effects work. Yeah, I thought they it was probably the good, best one, but, sort of, yeah. in terms of its consistency, for sure. Um, it looks some of like the flying the stuff looked a little weird, like putting his head on the CG body. Yeah, like, some of it was a little odd. kind of plasticky. Yeah, I never mm -hmm. really the got designs of like by the it. the sins were cool. Uh, yeah, but the 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 color on them weren't wasn't so good. Yeah, I mean like, it'll the, be dated all, like, in the brown. same way that uh, <laughs> Raimi's Spider Man yeah. was. You know, it just like it yeah. doesn't yeah, really sure. take exactly. away from the film for me. Although in Raimi's Spider Man, mm -hmm. like a lot of it was more impressive. Not necessarily the CG, but like the action scenes in general, the cinematography, the music. You know, there's so much more yeah. that, that that movie did better, but still respected in the same way, although not mm -hmm. as much, but and in the same way. It captures that tone really well. Yeah. And it's entertaining and it's competent, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. which is more than it's been so far. So keep Main this characters up. characters have arcs. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah it's consistent I mean, they're the also time. copying what Marvel's done. They're, they've completely gone with copying the Marvel tone now. But I guess it's Pretty working. Much. It's working better. So yeah. I stick with it. <laughs> Give me more Aquamans yeah. and Shazams. Yeah. <laughs> Down straight. Yeah. We gotta encourage this. I shit. can't believe they're they're resorting to like these characters no one cares about as like their big movie franchises. And it's I working. Think that's the key. Guardians it, of the Galaxy. They're doing better than Superman the same and Batman. Thing, though. Like, think about that. Guardians yeah. of the yeah. Galaxy, it's, they it's were honestly unheard the key. of. Right? It's way mm -hmm. more creatively liberating to work with a character no one knows than one that is quite rigid, like Superman. You can see why they struggle mm -hmm. so much with characters like that. Because they're, mm -hmm. they're so well they've known. done so much with them, too. Room. Exactly, yeah. yeah. You've got no wiggle room they've to be creative. They've explored every nook and cranny. It's like, okay, what else do we do with this fucking guy? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's usually not good. So take Shazam and make a weird-ass movie that's like a comedy and doesn't take itself too seriously and surprise surprise it works in the same way guardians mm -hmm. did and all these weird characters that no one knows also do more often than not when a bit of planning goes into it maybe they should do more of those they should do like a condiment king uh movie or I something mean, you joke but it'll probably be coming soon yeah. wait is that a we real talk thing about the joker thing oh okay we sure yeah let's about let's the uh, joker movie let's give our ratings for shazam and then we'll mention that Mm-hmm. What are you what are you uh, <laughs> what did you read? <laughs> you wants to go you first. Get, uh, I'll, I'll go first. Three out of I already five. know about okay, yeah, it. Fine. Yeah, I gave it three mm -hmm. out of five. It wasn't the most impressive thing to me, but it was likable, charming, nice. Won't really think about it in the future really, or I don't really want to watch it again, but yeah, three stars. Just nice. Yes. It was a lovely family film. It's entertaining. It did everything I had to do, three out of five. 
Yeah. I'm giving this one a seven out of ten, which what the I know, right? You know, I, I and part of that is due to just like me. I had a really fun time. Like I was thoroughly enjoying myself. Every beat of the story, like past the first twenty minutes, like the first twenty minutes were a little meh. Like it wasn't really into it, but everything yeah. past that point, like everything that that took place, I was just like, yeah, this is a lot of fun, and I I felt like I was a a child again watching a movie. And it was a really fun nice. experience for me. So who knows? It might change to a six later down the road. Like that's happened with other movies. But, you know, even considering mm-hmm. other movies that I've done that to, like Spider-Man Homecoming, like this is much better than that. So uh, I don't know. I think, I think Spider-Man yeah, Homecoming, Homecoming is a little better. And yeah, I think I this movie, uh, I don't want to say takes from Spider-Man Homecoming, but definitely you could compare the two in tone and the the lead character, you know. Yeah. yeah, Shazam's a really similar character to Spider-Man, like ju- yeah, juggling the two is. lives and yeah. you know inviting mm-hmm. him to school and stuff. Doesn't that that's a, a plot beat from Homecoming, isn't it? Like he invites Spider-Man to yeah. a party or whatever. Yeah, yeah, that kind of thing's mm-hmm. really similar. The the family stuff had a kind of a John Hughesy kind of vibe, and so mm-hmm. did Homecoming. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah, it took from the new Spider-Man and the old Spider-Man, the best parts, and I yeah, appreciate smart. that. But still, <laughs> speaking of the. DC Universe Joker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh. have you seen this trailer? Yeah. I don't know. I, I uh, What do you think? Here what's interesting about Joaquin Phoenix playing Joker is that even way before any of this was announced, my thought was if any actor could do the character justice in a way that mm-hmm. was comparable to Heath Ledger my first thought was Joaquin Phoenix because I think he's great. I love him. And so having him play the Joker now, it's like, oh, wow, great. This is exactly what I wanted. And so the rest of it, I guess, will just uh, be dependent on uh, the script and I guess Todd Phillips, which is a weird choice, but we'll see, I guess. Really weird, yeah. Are you not concerned at all about a character that is so crucial to Batman being in it, not being present in in the movie? Um, like that, isn't that isn't that the whole allure yeah, of Joker I, is the yin, yeah. yin and yang? To me, that seems like a Venom situation, where it's like, mm-hmm. isn't this guy supposed to be the antithesis of Spider Man? It depends what how it's doing. Done. It really does, because like I, yeah. I, I don't think that Venom's biggest problems were that Spider Man wasn't there. Like the the movie, well, had tons it just of makes problems. the film feel pointless. Well, it's just like a strange angle to attack it from to yeah, begin with. To is. me. I like this character is at his best when he's with this other character, and that's really the only purpose he ever really served <laughs> in most stories. Yeah. He was so supposed like to be, a, yeah. It really, the, I, yeah. Again, yeah, you could make it good, and it looks better than Jared Leto's version for sure. But like, <laughs> we'll see. <Didn't> much. <laughs> we'll, we'll see what they do. Because you could, yeah. you could flesh out an entire origin story without needing there to be this sort of yin and yang kind of thing. You don't necessarily Mm -hmm. need to have like the ultimate protagonist to the antagonist because Joker functions already as being this sort of like chaotic kind of person. And I think this movie is going to be less about him just, you know, it's not going to just start out with him being like, oh yeah, I want to wreak havoc and that's just what he's going to do the whole movie. I think it's going to be more of like a, a character study into why he became this person or how all of this started with him like in kind of really just get into the mind or the experience of of who this this person is and that could be interesting it really just all depends on how it's written and directed Mm -hmm. yeah that's a challenge but I really don't know, because something like that, that usually requires like a Paul Thomas Anderson or some, you know. Yeah. I would like love it's that. usually indie film. That would be great. Or something like, like a big budget superhero movie attempting something like this. I I respect it, and budget, I hope it works though? out, but it usually doesn't, because that's what Batman vs. Superman was. How big is the budget? <laughs> you know? Do we know the budget? Um, I'm guessing it's fairly larger considering what it is. You're just it's guessing. It's a superhero though. movie. Like, none of the footage yeah. they showed. It's probably it's around Logan. Huge. There was it's probably, probably like, like somewhere spectacle. 50 to 100 million. I don't know. Yeah. Who knows? Still, it could, it could be like and... a smaller scale kind of character film. We don't really know. Like, that would be really cool. Oh, the budget's 55 million. Okay. All right. So it's much lower than you thought. Mm hmm. Well, marketing, too. It'll probably be 100. Wow. Well, but <laughs> I, I, just, I don't million. really consider that 
the movie budget. This is a superhero movie made by a, a huge studio. Is it not? Yeah. But so it's got a lot of money behind it. They're hoping it does well. It's, it's going to be big. Here's the thing. DC has very obviously been trying new things now. So mm-hmm. it's very possible that they could do something competent with this. My only reservations yeah. with if they, this... If they let the director let him do whatever he wants. Well, we don't... Even, even if they let the director do whatever he wants, maybe that might be a bad thing because it's Todd Phillips. We don't know. <laughs> yeah, it might be. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's been so, their issue, hasn't it? Giving Zack yeah. Snyder too but much But the, the more... <laughs> The more cooks in the kitchen for something like this, like a really deep character study, I feel the more, the worse it could get. <laughs> you know, things yeah, like we'll this are see. usually written by one guy. This is like Taxi Driver or something. Mm-hmm. I don't know if a bunch it, of producers very, in, in Warner strange. Brothers can make and execute something like this in the same way. We'll see whenever <laughs> there's more footage out. I guess. Yeah, you, I hope so. I don't think it's really confusing from like an audience standpoint. Like just a couple of years ago, we had Jared Leto yeah. playing the same character, but now they're releasing a new movie that's not in the same universe, but while at the same time, they also have movies that are in a universe coming out. It's like really contrived, the whole yeah. thing it's they're ridiculous. going for. I think they're, they're just <laughs> confusing. <laughs> they're just Whatever. banking on the Joker being so recognizable. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's what yeah. it's always been. <laughs> and then mm. we're getting another Suicide Squad movie that's not the same, and it's a reboot by James Gunn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So like Crazy. Leto's I mean, Joker yeah. just doesn't exist anymore, I guess. That's great. That's the best news I've heard all day. It's so funny. Yeah. Oh, whatever. Have you seen anything else from Todd Phillips, either of you? Aside from the Hangover movies. All right. What else? What what what, what has he done other yeah, than Hangover movies? What else Hangover has he done? Movies? Remind me. <laughs> yeah. What Let's else see. has he done? <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna pull him up. He did right War now. Dogs. He did Due Date. Have more you like seen those? more like Doo Doo Date. <laughs> I haven't seen it. <laughs> just, Got him. Um, <laughs> yeah, Old it's just a bunch of big comedy movies, like cheesy comedy movies. Road Trip, Starsky and Hutch, two thousand four. Old School. Like this is this is why I'm not sold on <laughs> on yeah. this movie yet. Is because like what you got this guy? Weird choice. Very strange choice. They should have gotten Lynn Ramsey to to make it. She made that movie with Joaquin Phoenix last year, and that kind of reminds me of that. Mm-hmm. This Joker movie oh, yeah. reminds oh, me of yeah. that. You were, you were never really here. Yeah, but that wasn't as commercially successful as a Todd Phillips film, so. That's true. Hopefully we get the hangover of Joker movies. Who the fuck knows? We can only speculate <laughs> at this point. There's so little that's, yeah. that's out, so. Mm-hmm. Do we want to talk about uh, the recommendation? From sure. Let's last do it. Episode. All Let's right. do it. So this is the part of the podcast where we talk about a movie that was recommended from the previous episode. Uh, it was my turn to recommend a movie, and I decided to recommend something that I've I've always wanted to talk about on this podcast since we started it. <laughs> and the uh, full full title is uh, uh, Jean Dillman Vingt Trois. Uh, Quai du Commerce, uh, 1080 Bruxelles. And the entire title is basically just her name and address. And, uh, mm-hmm. it's, it's a f- very, uh, art house film from, uh, mm-hmm. Chantal Ackerman, who, uh, is, uh, very well known in, in terms of, like, uh, film buff film heads and like film school communities uh, she yeah. really paved the way for like experimental like feminist art house cinema and uh, I'm not gonna I, I don't really want to say my exact thoughts on this movie before hearing what you guys thought of it so uh, oh. take it away mm-hmm. boys mm. I'm fascinated well, what Ralph thought <laughs> <laughs> you fascinate what I thought. Huh. Mm-hmm. Well, do you want to describe the, yeah. the plot? So uh, there's a woman named Jeanne Dillman, and her husband died six years before the movie starts. And she gets things done around the house, and uh, she receives a letter from her sister uh, talking about how uh, her sister is, you know, cries when she thinks of her and 
how she should remarry and and become happy, but she's like stubborn and doesn't want to. And then she just kind of uh, gets absorbed into uh, her routine, and that becomes the only thing that uh, defines her until she uh, snaps at the end of the movie. Mm-hmm. And that's pretty. That's pretty, pretty much, much the movie. Yep. There is more to say about it, but that's that's the gist of it. Of course. Well, I like this movie. It is very, very long. <laughs> it's very long. It is. Um, too long. <laughs> too long. I would say too long. Way too um, long. But, but I get why it's long. <laughs> and I, I don't want to hold it against it, but at some point it's like, okay, I kind of... I wish this movie would have a bit more respect for my time <laughs> because mm-hmm. watching her like peel potatoes or whatever the fuck for the ex- making coffee, like cleaning the tub, going down to the store, it, it's a lot. Mm-hmm. And I can understand why a lot of people wouldn't like this movie. Um, but by that same token, there's so many great things about it. Uh, what about you, Alex, Alex? You talk a bit more about it. Yeah. So like all good art, its point is to get some kind of reaction out of you. And the reaction I got out of me was intense frustration and anger (laughs) because I was so (laughs) bored (laughs) for most of the movie. I understood exactly what it was going for. It's it's a film that's way more fun to talk about and write about and read about than it is to watch. It kind of forgets that it... Well, it doesn't even forget. It's like this weird barrier it has by it's like, look, this is the point of the movie. It's very like, it's very obvious that's the point of the movie. So you sit there and you're like, I can't. It's hard to even criticize it for doing what it's doing, but at mm-hmm. the same time, it is like intensely boring in what it's doing. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So here's my experience with the movie: is I found it when I was like, I think 17. I watched it, didn't know anything about it. So same as your guys' first experience, I guess. Uh, about halfway through, I was like, How long is this fucking movie? And I checked the time (laughs) and i realized it was halfway through where a normal movie would be like over by that point but it's still going and i was like holy shit and i powered through it and i was with one of my friends and we kind of like chatted over the movie and like you know just pointed things out that we observed and you know just had had a fun time but we weren't like quietly sitting and respecting the movie like we were kind of just like shooting the shit over it and by the end of it i was like you know what i'm glad that exists but it was a painful experience and i and i thought about it more mm-hmm. and i and i thought about how the painful experience of the film the boredom and the frustration and the anger that you experienced are all kind of intended from the film and that you're supposed right. to yeah that's the, feel that's that the weird thing. From you're her. supposed to feel this character's so, emotions yeah that was that was like 10 years ago and uh it's always been kind of like in the back of my mind of like there, there's a greater discussion to have <laughs> about this film that's more than just the film itself, I guess. And so I yeah. always wanted to talk about yeah, it on sentence. this podcast. And I realized that uh, my recommendation was on April 1st. And so <laughs> I des- I decided <laughs> for for, the one, so for a painful movie, <laughs> I would uh, <laughs> April Fool both of you. But to my surprise, when I watched it the second time, I actually kind of fell in love with it. I wasn't expecting to like it as much as I did when I watched it the second time. I think that mm. experiencing the film, knowing full well what it's going for and knowing how slow it's going to be before you even start it is is a really beneficial aspect towards your experience out of the film. Like, I didn't even really feel yeah. bored this time. And it sucks because I was wrestling with the idea of letting you guys know what the movie is before watching it but then i it's like i couldn't not just because of the whole april fools thing but because that would essentially be me telling you what to think about the film and that i just couldn't do that so my advice is even even if you were very frustrated with this film and you just don't like it overall give it like five years and come back to it like seriously because like it it was that's exactly what i was thinking it was it, it was a very eye-opening experience watching it for the second time like i think it's brilliant now like i was kind of memeing about it before but i I actually love it now 
That's exactly what I was going to say. Because, like, I would like to revisit this a few years from now when I have more context and I'm older and, you know. But as right now, there's a lot to appreciate about it just on a technical level, too. Mm -hmm. I think it looks great. Oh, yeah, it does. The, the way it's shot is fantastic. The production design in terms of, like, her green clothing and then the green furniture and the white walls. There's a lot of green and white in it that's used really well. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, it's just, like, the, the symmetry of everything. It was kind of Wes Anderson-y how it was shot. Yeah, every, everything that. was, like, stationary and, like, mm -hmm. just just uh, really purposeful. And I loved how um, yeah. you, you really got a feel for the environment, you know, because... Mm -hmm. A lot of it is shot basically in real time when she's walking from one to room to the other You get a feel for the the space of the apartment that she's in turns off the light walks into another room does her other thing You know cleans some shit like you you feel like you're there and it's it's one of those movies that really Really does a great job at putting you into the perspective of the character and obviously as we've mentioned the character winds up, you know going insane because of the boring yeah. repetitive mundane routines of her own life and and it's it's one of the craziest most unique and out there movies ever really and it's it's like it's a painful experience the first time especially and it's you almost can't yeah. recommend it to people but then you can at the same time mm -hmm. it's so bizarre yeah it's it very it's like... very hard to get through mm hmm it feels yeah. like when you go to like an art installation somewhere, like you go to the Tate Modern and you see this big screen playing like a movie like this. And you're like, what is this? And you stand there for a few minutes and it's like, okay, she's just, she's what? She's just cleaning. <laughs> she's just cooking yeah, for like minutes at a time. And then you go and you read the description that's next to the screen. And it's like, oh, okay, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's like the, the yeah, explanation. Right. It's like you get it, and then you really don't want to sit through it. <laughs> but yeah, you, you do. That's exactly and it, what I it was got like. something out of it. Yeah, I got something out of it. But that's the weird thing because I do feel like I got something out of it, but I didn't enjoy watching it really at all. <laughs> yeah, and like, that's the hard part when coming to, to recommending it. It's like I don't know. Yeah, because it's like, such. Do you an want investment. to be frustrated like... and annoyed? <laughs> Yeah. Do you have four hours to kill? A lot of people don't have four hours to kill. They got fucking jobs and families and shit. Yeah. <laughs> what are you gonna spend four hours watching something to frustrate you? It but is asking It, a it lot is well made and it has something to say. Yeah. It it is so strange to talk about. But mm -hmm. like you were saying, how all the sort of technical aspects are quite good. I agree. Mm -hmm. But where it was really kind of annoying me was a lot of the acting felt really kind of stiff and unnatural to me. Like, it mm -hmm. didn't feel like real Some people talking. To me, it, it kind of felt like these weird exposition dumps were just kind of coming out. It, yeah, I, <laughs> it's it's hard to tell when, obviously, they're not speaking English and you're trying to kind of figure out, like, what's going on here, like, how's their delivery and stuff like that. But I had this yeah, weird air really about it to me. very formal. Well... I, I I think I get what you're talking about. Um, I don't know if you're particularly referencing the scene where she's reading the letter from her sister. But what I got out of that is like, yeah, it, it's 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 like she's kind of reading it off as though it's a grocery list. But that's because she's so separated and detached, and and like there is no emotional bond between her and her son and they only talk about these mundane things like the only thing that that she says to him at the dinner table is like stop reading your book like don't read your book at the table and then they just sit in silence for the entire meal and you feel like this yeah. this incredibly awkward disconnect between them and you understand just how broken her life is and and how she can't even have this this maternal connection with her son that later in the film she explains like that was her entire motivation for getting into this life in the first place that she wanted to have a home and she wanted to have a child and now she has that and her husband's dead but she's just absorbed into this never-ending routine where she's essentially just trying to keep herself busy at any given time in the day mm -hmm. and as soon as her routine gets disrupted you know it's this this kind of like this series of, of dominoes that that fall where you know she overcooks her potatoes and then she like drops her cutlery and then she she's uh, yeah. has to go back Everything to the store and then she's an hour late for this other thing and then the person 
who's normally working at the coffee shop where she's there isn't there anymore and someone else is in her spot and the, the camera like it's it's in the center of the shot is the spot where you saw her sitting last time. And so it's like very heavily implying that that was part of her routine, even though you only saw it once and the main character's off to the mm -hmm. side and you can, t you, you can see just how like out of her own element and uncomfortable she is because she's been doing the exact same thing for like six years. And then all of a sudden yeah. it's because her routine is broken and her routine defined her entire life. She falls apart and it's insane. Mm -hmm. And I just went on a rant. But. I enjoyed that. No, it's a, it was a good rant. <laughs> and it, it, to further add to that, I thought she was pretty great. I think a lot of the acting was static and, and very formal. I think that was intentional. Yeah. But she really delivered. And the, really the fact did. that the cinematography is so static allows her to like play with the space more. It allows her to control the space almost. And I, I love that about it. Yeah. she they're, they're, like As soon as she gets an hour of free time because her schedule fucked up and her routine got dismantled. She's just left at the end of the movie like, okay, now I have I have like an hour and I don't know what to do with myself because I've I've already done everything. She started like dusting all of these ornaments in her in her cupboard that just look fine already. She just sits and and you can see in her her character she's like in that moment, this is the first time she's self-reflected in so long and that mm -hmm. that causes her to to eventually snap. Is she's she's in yeah. that position where she can't distract and occupy herself for the first time in like six years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's like completely detached in every way. She's clearly like heavily depressed or something along the lines. She just has like no reason to live. So she puts all of her, she kind of just distracts herself yeah, yeah. with the, the routine. It's just the routine goes yeah. on for hours and hours. <laughs> and you have to watch every <laughs> it in excruciating detail, which yeah, is yeah. the point, but... It does. It does but try your patience. <laughs> yeah, and it's so realistic too because there are people that do that. There are people that are mm -hmm. constantly looking for of something course. to to fill up their time so that they don't have to think about their own lives. It's insane. I I love this movie. Yeah, in terms of like realism, how do you feel about the this this final snap at the end in terms of how that's kind of yeah, portrayed? Yeah, that that's. That's what I was going to talk about, because yeah. I like a lot about this movie, but the ending, there was a lot I didn't like about it. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought as a whole it was kind of goofy. Just really how, weird just execution how it was, uh, of that scene. executed at the end? The execution of it, and just the, as a story beat itself, it's like, okay, so this is a very slow movie where it's very intricate character stuff, and then it ends with like a big murder. Like, she snaps, and it's like, okay. That was like an obvious way to go, <laughs> but mm -hmm. I feel like it, it was a little predictable. I, I I feel like the first time I watched it, I, I kind of felt that way, but not the second time. Because I, I feel like the film mm -hmm. as a whole, part of the reason why I wasn't as bored watching it the second time is because it functions much better when you're watching it in its entirety with the understanding that she is essentially like a lit fuse, that she's like a ticking time bomb, mm -hmm. and that she's slowly deteriorating okay. over the course of the film. And like even before her her entire routine is is disrupted and dismantled, like this might just be based on interpretation alone. Like there there might not be that much in the film that really shows it because it's a lot of subtlety. But you can you can see with yeah. that understanding of the information, you you can at least imagine or 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 project onto her even this this idea of her not being happy like even when you know she's cooking and you you can see her making an entire meatloaf and you're just looking at her face and you're you're going like wow she's really just just trying to distract herself from how unhappy and unfulfilled she is yeah well it leaves time for the audience to put their own emotion and onto her and think mm -hmm. about what she's going through and kind of it, it lets the audience do a lot of the work which is what's great about it but mm -hmm. you know it's still the the in terms of the execution at the end, it still looked pretty fake. There was like a goofy grunt when he died. Yeah, yeah it was just you know silly, and the, the, the rest of the movie is so murder. realistic. It's yeah. so realistic. I, I I didn't get bothered by it the second time, partially because yeah. having watched it for the first time in like ten years, I remembered it being goofier, and then I watched it and I was like, oh, that wasn't actually as bad as I remembered. So maybe that's part of it. Mm -hmm. So are okay. you like ready and willing to rewatch it? Yeah. Based on your first impressions, it sounds like you 
Like I'm a you know. fucking trooper. I'm fucking hardcore. <laughs> I wasn't about to, oh, like, April Fool's you with hours. a four-hour-long movie of a woman cleaning her house and then not do it myself. <laughs> That'd be a dick move. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I had to suffer, yeah, too. I but I, it turns out that I didn't really suffer because I loved it the second time. So it worked out. Is there, like, a shorter cut of this movie? <laughs> yeah, it makes like, me wonder. Because I, I would, I would love to rewatch it, but I would like it to be two and a half hours, maybe, or two hours. <laughs> It's the nah, same thing to be trimmed be down and, and be more yeah. succinct. I took bathroom breaks right. uh, during the transitions from one day to the next. So whenever the title card came yeah. up, end of day one, end of day two, that's when you know, like, stretched my legs and and like made a drink and you know got a snack. So maybe that's the correct mm -hmm. way to watch it because like I was fully anticipating what this movie was, so I, I didn't. I was comfortable doing that. Yeah, I don't know if the film would have just been more entertaining if it was more... <sighs> oh, this is going to make me sound like such a <laughs> normy moron. But... Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't. don't. It's a, say it. I'm, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm imagining like a, a visually kind of creative and energetic director taking a hold of a similar concept and using... Because the film is kind of structured in a, a pretty formulaic way in terms of like acts three days each one is basically acts as an act so you can imagine that being condensed and a very similar story being told in a more but then i <laughs> but then it's the not this movie it, then it's, it's not the movie anymore and it's not yeah, important. It's, a different and it's not like, groundbreaking it doesn't, it and it's, doesn't it's capture not that. artistic it's it's no longer right this gigantic milestone in in artistic art house cinema right. you know that wouldn't capture her emotion as well. Yeah, it wouldn't be an I think important movie anymore. This is exactly what we should be feeling because this is what she's going through, and it's hard as fuck to get through. I get it. I mean, it's hard for me too, but it, like, I can't picture the story being told another way. Yeah, it maybe can't slightly be, cut down because then it's not the same movie yeah. anymore. It, then it's it not would the just same defeat the anymore. purpose. It, yeah, it's weird. It's super yeah, it strange weird. and unique, and it's what makes it good and bad at the same time. Mm -hmm. I'm glad we're talking about it. Yeah. I wonder how many of our viewers watched it, the oh, yeah. whole thing. <laughs> well, it was really hard to even find for me. Like, I, I bought the... Yeah, well, I just found it on Amazon. The Blu-ray, but um, it didn't work on anything I owned, so I had to find it in other ways, which is uh, really annoying. Mm -hmm. That sucks. Yeah, because you got yours pretty early. Yeah. Right? No, but I can play like, it oh, off it, Alex so... Alex is already on top of it. <laughs> oh, well. No, because I, I had to import the the like criterion from like italy or something and oh. you know i don't have a dvd player that can play or blu-ray player that can play you know anywhere mm -hmm. yeah just get Whatever. one of those region free ones they're like a couple hundred bucks yeah two or three hundred bucks canadian i guess but yeah i mean i think it's one i'm just gonna have to sit on and think about because like i certainly yeah. don't want to see the film again anytime soon give it five and years i do get it i <laughs> Yeah, give Come it back five to years. It. It's just it just sounds so weird. It'll to be say on that. your it's mind. Like, yeah. Or at least if if your yeah. experience was anything like mine. Like I never forgot about that movie. It's always been on my mind. That's in the back it, of yeah. my mind at least. It's so strange to have a film where its best and worst qualities are the same thing. Yeah. It's so <laughs> yeah. strange. So you can't quite wrap your head around it because you can't you can't say to someone, What, check out this like nearly four hour long movie? About like <laughs> nothing on paper that's purposefully boring, <laughs> but it's purposely great. frustrating you know, it's so and mundane. Good. Yeah, yeah. It that's is. a good. That's a it, good. It depends how you look at that it. question we got about like films that are hard to sell from the description or something. I think we have a, oh, yeah. a question coming up later about that kind of thing. It's like this is one of those. <laughs> it's just so strange. <laughs> I I kind of felt bad because it was only like two or three episodes ago where we were talking about the length of a film being justified uh, in terms of the experience. And yeah. as, soon as, as soon as I mentioned it was a long film, uh, and I think Ralph said, like, ooh, I was like, I, I got this impression that you guys maybe thought that I was recommending one where, like, it would be very entertaining throughout, and I kind of felt bad, because this is not one of those. <laughs> <laughs> this is not one of those at all, yeah. and I couldn't spoil it. I couldn't say anything. But, well, I yeah, did like, ooh because it's it's exciting when you say this movie's four hours long. It sounds okay. like oh, this is something else. This is like an interesting. <laughs> it is. <laughs> this is gonna be something I've yeah, and it is. It it's, is. It's right. really out there. It's something that stands out. 
Well, yeah, the, the, the best thing that came out of the movie for me was while I was watching it, I was talking to someone I know who does refer to themselves as like a feminist. So mm-hmm. like this is right mm-hmm. up their alley because of it being like, you know, progressive feminist filmmaking. Mm-hmm. And, and we went into this huge discussion about like what the film was trying to say with its, you know, what it was going for. And it was like this whole thing that evolved into the, the discussion of, you know, women in cinema because the, the whole film it was it was an all-female crew if i understand correctly uh, like 80 percent. i think the imdb trivia says 100 percent, but the interview she gave on the criterion blu-ray said 80 percent. okay the crew was so mostly sort of female perspective maybe like the production crew was female but like the pre-production people and the editor was male i don't know <laughs> there's a lot so of I women think, worked yeah. on this movie the this most is a important huge roles feminist film. were all female in terms of the production right yeah so that perspective, I think, is really valuable, especially because of mm-hmm. the time period and when it came out and how, you know, horribly sexist everything, you know, still was in the 70s. Exactly. So that kind of thing's really interesting. Um, but how did you guys kind of interpret the sort of feminist angle? Like, what do you think I was trying to say? Like the conversation around, uh, I guess, like women's roles in, in family life and households being uh, caregivers and and looking after the home like that's all very commonplace today i'm not sure it was as commonplace Mm -hmm. in the 70s so this was like a fairly Mm -hmm. kind of i I don't know if radical is the right right word but but like um kind of a very new perspective a very new perspective especially for filmmaking and i really enjoy that this movie which was for the most part made by women did manage to tell a new and interesting story based on a feminine perspective that felt really genuine and real. It's like how you'd never think <laughs> that you could make a movie about a woman cleaning her house and have having it be anything like yeah. substantive, but it was. And I know that like there are people who will watch this and completely disagree, I guess. I know that there's people who who would think this movie is just pretentious crap or something, but I, I really I really do think it's it's like a a fairly genius intelligent film. It's it's mm-hmm. groundbreaking. Like, do you think you're supposed to treat the main character as if she's some kind of victim to be it society or or whatever? Um, it really depends on how you look at it because there's lines in the film that that kind of support that. You know, when she was talking about how she wanted a, a child in a home and uh, she met her husband and, you know, she said he was kind of ugly, but she kind of just, you know, went with it anyway. And one mm-hmm. of the lines was because that's what you did at the time. And she was talking about, I think, like after the war or something, there was some war. Yeah, <laughs> I think mm-hmm. I'm not I, I'm really not uh, educated on on that or anything. But like this film obviously is trying to make statements on like the roles of of women in society so i think that that's perfectly valid to uh be talking about this film from like i guess kind of a feminist perspective yeah i was just trying to figure out because a big part of the film is that she's like a prostitute and Mm -hmm. uses her body for like monetary gain i was wondering if the film was trying to sort of convey that she shouldn't have to feel guilt for that or because I guess I don't know. I'm I'm not deep in the you know. I'm, I'm, I'm like a white guy. I can't really talk about seventies. <laughs> We're all women, white guys. But... <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's what, that's that's what I'm so trying well. to say. Like, there's clearly something going on there, and I'm just desperately trying to figure out like what exactly what it was going for. And I guess that's that's part of it. It's just trying to figure out what you take from it. Because there are like mm-hmm. broader themes you could kind of take away from it. Like broader. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. I don't know just like I don't even know how to explain it because it, it it's so like moldable in terms of what you can take away yeah. from the experience there's a lot left up to the audience and it's so long <laughs> and there's just a lot to take out of it well yeah and, that's, like, to, that's to watch it thing. just once it's hard to get everything and I yeah, plan like, on seeing it again at some point half the time you are just your mind wanders while she is just doing something monotonous, like, um, you know, just washing the bath. And so, mm-hmm. like a real person, your mind starts to wander, just like it probably would for her. And you just start thinking about, 
like what what were they going for in the scene what's the overarching sort of message and themes of this supposed to be and that's kind of where the enjoyment lies it's it's so strange that it is for a detached movie to have a detached kind of meaning that's separate from it yeah much of the film is yeah. interpretation yeah it's the best and worst thing about it like the, mm -hmm. the symbolic storytelling is really good but sometimes it can be a bit a bit much when it's just it's that runtime man <laughs> I can yeah, I'd not be surprised if people like try watching this movie and are like what what the fuck I've been watching this for thirty minutes and like there's been no progression <laughs> like nothing's happened yeah I think she like <laughs> reads the letter from her uh, sister like close to an hour through the movie or something it's, like, pretty far yeah. into it and that's really considered like the first bit of story there yeah it's nuts it's nuts to talk about it's nuts to try and recommend and I mean as far as you know, unique experiences. I don't, I don't regret watching the movie or anything. It's just really hard to recommend. It should be like a thing people do now is just recommend this movie on April Fool's and see what <laughs> can get out of it. Yeah, well, I, <laughs> so it was one like... one day you're allowed to. I was just waiting for the correct time and then it was my recommendation on April 1st and I was like, fuck, I gotta do it. You know, when the fuck am I yeah. gonna do it? Yeah. I had to do it. Yeah, man. I, I really love how... This is essentially like many other films that we've talked about on this podcast, this is a film that exemplifies the idea of creating a new experience in terms of how something is told. And so if you were, if you were to take these same shots and put them in a different film where, you know, her making her meatloaf or, you know, her uh, coffee going bad and her trying to figure out if it's the milk or not, or dropping a, you know a piece of cutlery or just cleaning whatever you put that into a different mm -hmm. film let's say it's a part of a you know just like a transitionary scene or a montage or something you don't get nearly as much from it as you do in this film when when you when you strip away the idea of having like a a um i guess like a, a really fast-paced narrative or plot when you strip those things away then you're essentially forced to look at the smaller details, which in a way is mm -hmm. kind of thematic because they're they're taking ideas like women's roles being in the home, cooking, cleaning, etc., things that people often, you know, take for granted in society and just don't think about, and they're adding a new lens to it. They're adding a new perspective to it. Yeah. And so you you start to notice these subtle details in terms of her facial expressions or these like weird tics, like she'll just you know, when she was she was sitting at the dinner table with her son and you can just see her hand wander and she flattens out the the tablecloth and it's already flat to begin yeah. with. It's just like it's a small thing. It's 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 unnoticeable in any other movie, but it adds so much character in this movie. And it's so weird because you're, you're forced to yeah. to <laughs> consider these smaller things more significant than if it were told in a different way. Yeah. Yeah. Did you find it to be quite, um, I don't know, it was, it made me kind of upset after watching it because it was like, this is so bleak. It's like <laughs> deconstructing the the fucking repetition of day-to-day -day life where it's like, look, you do this kind of shit every oh, day. Oh, yeah. You do the same thing every single day. Like, no matter what, you're going to be cooking something, you're going to be eating something, you're going to be doing tasks like cleaning and all this shit that you have to do. And it's like, mm -hmm. oh, by the end of the movie, it's like, dude... This, this shit's heavy right now, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. I like, I, I was noticing this weird, uh, I don't know if irony is the right word. I was noticing um, before I watched uh, the movie, I was like, oh, wait, I'm going to do the dishes first. And then I started doing the dishes. I was like, oh, wait, this is the movie. Yeah. I, I am Jean, <laughs> Jean Dielman. Yeah, it's like crushingly disparaging. It's so bleak. Yeah. My kind of movie. I, again, that is the point. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, right up your alley. Yeah, life sucks. <laughs> I mean, yeah, to me, it's a, val it's a valuable experience if it can get any kind of emotion out of you. And it clearly did for me, so yeah. it did its job, whether I enjoyed yeah. it or not. That's a valuable mm -hmm. experience at the end of the day, so. Yeah, this was the first movie that I've recommended where I honestly had no idea what you guys were going to think about it. I was talking with my <laughs> roommate, like, will they hate it? <laughs> like, will they just be mad? <laughs> like, <laughs> Because there's no other movie like yeah. it. But I could see a lot of people hating it. And I totally understand if you hate this. <laughs> but mm -hmm. like... 
it, I think it's important, first of all, and I think there's a lot mm-hmm. to appreciate about it. And if this sounds like it's for you, because someone must, this must sound appealing to somebody, a four hour long, like, movie with feminist themes in it. <laughs> like, I, I thought it was mm-hmm. pretty interesting for the most part. Could have been a little shorter. No. But then at the same time, it can't. It can't. Just a little bit. It can't, it can't Just a little be shorter, bit. no. Maybe, maybe cut out some of the potato skidding, no. some of the, the bathtub cleaning. Like, make, make it a minute shorter. I am going to <laughs> use her meatloaf recipe. I'm going to watch the scene, <laughs> and I'm going to recreate use it. Use it as, like, an instructional meatloaf. video? Yeah. You could you learn how that. to make food. Like, the main critique. Who, who's the guy who does the cooking from from movies? Binging with the Bobbish? He needs to do that. I was, I was saying yeah, that. Binging with I was Bobbish. like, yeah, he should make the meatloaf from uh, Jean Dielman. <laughs> but he yeah, won't. Yeah, because he just it, like, needs to copy what movie. she's doing. Yeah, nobody's heard of that <laughs> fucking movie, so. Yeah. Nah, he needs to do it. He does, with he does like Rick and Morty. It. There's no way he's going to do this. Oh, he needs to do this. Come on, he has he to be running be out of ideas now. I don't think he's gonna. <laughs> he should. And it should be shot like this, too. And the video should be four hours long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like he's he's done cooking and it just follows him around his apartment. <laughs> and then he stabs somebody with scissors. <laughs> <laughs> Brushing his teeth. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I, love, I love how the way that they showed her snap at the end, like there was enough where you understood that it wasn't necessarily premeditated like it was a snap it wasn't like oh yeah she decided she yeah. was just gonna she was just gonna uh stab somebody you know she brings the scissors in because she's opening the package with the jacket or whatever and then he comes over and she just leaves the scissors on the on the desk and then all of a sudden it's like oh it's right there and then after that moment mm-hmm. she snaps her body language was very good throughout the movie oh yeah it kind of it it you know it did a lot more communication than any any words do in the film. Yeah, I think it was really really well acted, in my opinion. Yeah, but who knows? It could just be one of those things where it's like you're you're stripped away of all of these other elements, and it's it it forces you to to project and interpret things into the film from yourself. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, she's not overacting. The director probably gave her something to think about. And she's just internalizing that. <laughs> and yeah, you project a lot onto that blank face. That's the best acting there is. It's just fucking sitting there doing nothing. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I think I think the director uh, Chantal Ackerman was like in her twenties when she made this. Her first yeah. uh, wow. her first short film. Let me look this up. Was I think in like sixty eight or something? And I think she was eighteen. But yeah, she's Damn. she's crazy. Born. Yeah. I would like to check out some of her other works. The uh, first short film that she made was on the special features, so I watched that. But there's some other stuff from her that is, um, I guess, just taught in film schools because she is a very yeah. influential mm-hmm. director mm-hmm. in film history. So, Yeah, she is. Uh, the Meetings of Anna is a very good movie. Mm-hmm. I've seen that. The Meetings of Anna? Yeah, The Meetings of Anna. <laughs> have you seen that one? <laughs> I have not. No. 1978. Recommendation? <laughs> no, I don't know. Okay. Did so you've one seen of that. Movies. I've heard good things about Je du il eh, el. <laughs> Je du il el. <laughs> Je du il Yeah. Yes. I, I've seen, because again, she's a big film school thing. So we watch her in mm-hmm. class. And okay. I've watched her stuff with other people. Yeah. She's hugely important <laughs> to, to film, especially women in film. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Was this the first uh, female director that we've had for the recommendation on the podcast? No, um, the Happy as Lazaro. Oh, yeah. That's Alice Rodorosco. That's right, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Damn it. Ha, beat you to it. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's older, though, so it wins. Yeah. Uh, I get the progressive points. Fuck. Woo! <laughs> I did it. <laughs> Fuck. I, I needed my brownie points. <laughs> It's okay. Mm-hmm. Now I'm not a good person. <laughs> All right, what are you? What are your guys' ratings? <laughs> yeah. Uh, How do you? Yeah, Alex, what's yours? I'm more, most uh, curious about yours, dude. I don't know what to give it. Awesome. <laughs> like with every other film, you. even even climax, I came to a a climax with and decided <laughs> what number to mm-hmm. give it. What you was climax that? The climax. I gave it a four star in the end. That one. Good. Um. Okay. I have no clue, honestly, for this one. It's like, mm. at the same time, a one star and a five star. 
Yeah. But I don't think going <laughs> in the middle is, is fair either. So I'm like trapped. <laughs> yeah. Because then well, what like, would you halfway guess? point would just imply that it's average, but it's not. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's a sign of an interesting piece of work. It's something yeah. you don't know what to give it. Um, I'll give it three out of five, I think. Mm-hmm. I think there's a lot to enjoy about it. And again, like I said, I think it's very important. It looks great. Acting is pretty good for the most part. Uh, gorgeous production design and all that. Um, yeah, I, I would recommend it if this sounds like something you can sit through, which is not most people. Mm. And I understand yeah. that. <laughs> and it's totally like, oh, you don't want to sit through this? I totally understand. It doesn't make you like a like an idiot or like a normie to not want to sit through this four hour long movie. <laughs> 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 it's totally understandable. <laughs> uh, after my first watching, like ten years ago or so, after reflecting on it, I gave it a, a seven. Second watch, okay. Fuck it, it's an eight out of ten. I love it. I think it's great. I oh, really, okay. really enjoyed it my second time in ways that I was not expecting. And uh, Alex, you're sticking with your undecided. Well, I I will rate it eventually, but just full on letterboxed. Yeah. I need a few more days to think about this. I do. Okay. Yeah, you need to see it a few more times. <laughs> <laughs> Watch it three more times and then let us know the rating. <laughs> Just before we get on to questions, there's uh, something else I wanted to mention. Uh, it was shot in a real apartment. If you uh, Google Maps really? the address, ah, <laughs> uh, cool. you, you can see like the outside area where she was walking, and it's pretty crazy. And um, mm. as they were filming it, uh, because they had such limited space for the camera, so the, the kitchen shots... The DP, she thought it was like too close, like her hands were too big. And, and sometimes when she was moving her hands and it was closer towards the camera, it's like, oh, no, her hands are way too big. And Chantel was like, mm-hmm. yeah, you, you start to see those things after you've gone through so much footage. But, you know, in the m- movie, you can't really tell. But what they wound up doing was they reshot the kitchen scenes on a stage that they built so that they could have the camera further back. And then they wound up using mm-hmm. none of those. <laughs> so... <laughs> they completely reshot all yeah. the kitchen scenes, and then we're just like, you know what? The real kitchen is better. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Oh, well, damn. Well, you know. Great movie. Reshoots. It sounds like something DC would do. <laughs> <laughs> Question time? I guess so. Question time. We actually got some really good questions this time. Way better than last episode's ones. Okay. I'm just going to say that right now. Not to put down last week's ones. They were okay, but... They really went above and beyond for these ones. Are these ones epic? Oh, dude. You just wait and see. <laughs> but if you want to leave your own questions for us to answer, possibly, head over to the Sardonicast Reddit where Ralph will leave a funny thread. And I liked his his one for this episode, which was just a video of his face saying, leave questions <laughs> below. That was a nice little Thanks. surprise for the fans. <laughs> I'm glad you liked it. Okay, let's start off with one from... Makal Shadakal, who said, Aside from good old Derek Savage, have any of the directors responded to your reviews of their films, whether it be negative or positive? Uh, Stacy Title responded to my Bye Bye Man one. Ah! That's right, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I said it was like a piece of shit on Twitter or something. I'm like, who likes this movie? And then she tweeted back <laughs> at me like, Rolling Stone, New York Times, you know, people gave her good reviews. I'm like, you got me there. <laughs> That's it, though. Damn. I think Dak Shepard liked one of the Chips tweets. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Not one of mine, like one of my fans tweeted yeah, something yeah. dumb. About eating yeah. ass, probably. Yeah, <laughs> something about eating ass. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Adam? I think that's it. Uh, yeah, quite a few times. Uh, pff, Jim Cummings, who directed Thunder Road, not the voice actor, but the other Jim Cummings, he watched and responded to my uh, review. Uh, positively. Um, Joe Penna, Mystery Guitar Man, sent me a screener of uh, Arctic, and that's how I watched it in the first place. So obviously, you saw my review, and oh, cool. you know, I uh, was happy that mm. I gave it a positive review. Um, there's uh, Uva Bull follows me on Twitter. <laughs> Maybe he hasn't seen the <laughs> really? videos where I've taken <laughs> shots at him. Nice. Uh, and he he's liked some of my tweets, and he has a restaurant, like an award winning German restaurant in Vancouver, and I really want to go to it. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently it's great. Yeah. You should go. Yeah, I really want Before to. Before he figures out that you don't like him, <laughs> it's not. I, I, you I, I can't when you say go I don't there. like him. I just, I you know, his movies. Don't that. like his films. He, I might love yeah, his, his food. He'll challenge you, dude. I might love his food. I, I forgot to mention a celeb. Sorry, sure. uh, the Safdie brothers. Nice. Uh, liked 
something. Yeah, they oh, liked cool. that I thought Good Time was the best movie of the year. So yeah. that was nice. Mm. Yeah, they're great. Yeah. Uh, Derek Savage, obviously. Don't need to go into that. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> Michael Goy, the director of Megan is Missing. This one's probably the best oh, one. Oh, yeah. Um, he he saw my review, and uh, I mentioned in my review, like, he he very clearly has, like, Google alerts on or something. Like, he, he's commented on, like, every single <laughs> mention of his movie on the internet <laughs> at that point anyway. And uh, he he left these comments under my reviews like, oh, yeah, well, uh, haters make me famous. Like, basically, like I, I'm paraphrasing just like, <laughs> oh, more people are watching it on Netflix now. Uh, you just don't get it. And then yeah. when he realized that, like, nobody in the comments section was defending him and that people were just like calling him out, he was like, oh, well, maybe uh, maybe if this were the real Michael Goy, then uh, you'd be smart. But you're stupid. Uh, I'm actually a troll. And he pretended not to be him. And then I responded to his comment oh, like, hey, no. if you click on your profile, you can see a trailer for your film uploaded like years <laughs> before it was released. So <laughs> way to go on the long con oh, here. Man. You're like you're like five year yeah. troll. Or something like you uploaded this this trailer on your on your channel like so long before typing this comment to pretend you're you're Michael Goy and then pretend you're not. And what's the ultimate irony about this is like his entire movie is this this like dangers of the internet like your kids are on the internet sort of horror movie like <laughs> and he clearly doesn't understand the internet which I pointed out in the review obviously I'm like this isn't how any of this shit works That's hilarious. and so it just it just proved <laughs> my my points I guess by him responding in that way. <laughs> No, you're just a hater, man. There's probably more directors. Um, oh yeah, the director of Shazam retweeted me. He was like, yeah. oh, cool. he literally said, uh, "Wow, a positive review from your movie sucks." <laughs> 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 yeah, that was pretty cool. That's neat. But yeah, he started out like as a like his first short or whatever lights out was like a YouTube thing. So it's cool that he's yeah. Like, yeah. engaging, and watching with the community. I really feel like. Uh, we're going to be seeing more of that as time goes on because, you know, this oh, is yeah. the new generation of of media. So mm-hmm. new directors sure, yeah. are probably going to it's start out better. watching a lot of content similar to what we make. So they're going to be mm-hmm. aware of us and it, you know, just further yeah, legitimizes mm-hmm. what we're doing, I guess. Right. What about you, Alex? I got a couple of good ones. So probably the most interesting one is um, both the Smosh members. Oh, yeah. Anthony and Ian had... <laughs> Polar opposite responses to my video on the Smosh movie. Ian Hecox got really offended by my review and was very upset and tweeted at me that he, he you know, <laughs> was putting him down or whatever, smearing a, another YouTuber for trying something Jeez. new, was his words. <laughs> You're not allowed. Like, Oof, dude. Yeah. But like, then Anthony came in just the other day, weirdly enough, into the comment section and said, This is actually so accurate, it hurts. So it's like the opposing <laughs> members one? of Smosh for this the Smosh movie video. Yeah, that's that Smosh. Comments. Yeah, yeah, just mad. Like the the two leads. <laughs> we talked about in one of the really early episodes on this podcast, I think, about when they, uh, I guess, broke up <laughs> when uh, Anthony decided yeah, he's yeah. not a part of Smosh anymore, and just like the yeah. extreme contrast. In, in in terms of like how each of them announced it, like Anthony gave this really like mm. heartfelt like community you know video, like hey, this is why I'm not doing this. Like he was very genuine, and then Ian just did this like full scale production where the entire video is like, <laughs> hey, you know what? We've got like 20 writers on this anyway, so it doesn't matter that he's gone. Hey guys, <laughs> so we're a corporate machine, and minded. not even yeah. not even yeah. being aware in any way of how that looks, and like. I mean, he he didn't get like a negative response to it or whatever, aside from just me shitting on him a little. But it was it was just so <laughs> telling in the ways that, yeah. that they decided to each announce that they're not working with each other anymore. It, it was it said everything, really. Yeah, yeah, there's a big like philosophical difference there. Oh yeah, between those two, <laughs> which is great to see. Yeah, so not surprising that they, they reacted they should make a in movie that way. about them one day. It's a very interesting conflict they have. <laughs> eh. I don't want to over dramatize it. Over dramat dramatize? Yes. Is that the word? Dramatize? Dramatize. Dra- oh, eh. Dramatize? Whatever. Right. Dramatize? Whatever works. Sounds right. Yeah, we know how you think, <laughs> yeah, Ralph. That sounds right. Laborin. <laughs> yeah, that's how I do it. Sounds good <laughs> enough. Laborin. Lupita. 
<laughs> Labyrinth, yeah. Oh, how do you say it then? Lupita. It's Lupita. Lupita Nyong'o, right? We said it twice in the podcast Lupita. before you mispronounced it. Lupita <laughs> Nyong'o. <laughs> Whatever. Exactly. Exactly. Whatever. The yeah. American attitude. Exactly. Fuck it. <laughs> Works for me. Sounds right. Yeah. Next question. Was that it, Alex? Just Guess Smosh? So? <laughs> uh, one one other one, I guess, of no. Oh, oh, okay. Sorry, I thought we were going on the next question. Sorry. <laughs> no, his name is Lewis Lewis Schoenbrunn, who directed The Amazing Bulk. Oh, he sent me a message. Oh, on YouTube. that guy. Yeah, and he was like the the opposite of Derek Savage. He was like, he was really cool about it. He supported the video. He didn't threaten me. <laughs> he was like, I, I appreciate you know getting the movie to more eyes so more people can see it and whatever yeah yeah that was neat i, I appreciate that one it was nice to have that after the, the proper derek reaction thing. derek savage was the opposite of derek savage at one point when he reacted <laughs> yeah, to yeah, my video so he weird. was fine and then i guess he just didn't like your accent or something yeah he just hates british people you're no good punk bitch <laughs> Flying point but if troll. the director is proud of the movie, then they shouldn't like insult people or anything. But if even if people don't like it, it's like I made the movie, I'm happy with it, and just move yeah, exactly. on with your life. Why do all these directors like insult people and get so defensive about it? <laughs> like well, yeah. Zack Snyder, yeah, like exactly. what you were just reading, like Derek Savage. It's like you made art and you're happy with it, and that, of course not everyone's gonna like it. So f- just fucking deal with it and move on. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, I I, so, I feel the same way. It's like a bunch of babies. You know, I've been working on my album for like three years now. Like, if Anthony Fantano doesn't like it, if he gives it a negative review, it doesn't matter. You know, as long as I'm happy right. with it. Well, yeah, exactly. That, that's always it's the everything. thing. At the end of the day, you've still made something. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. no one can ever take that away. It's gonna connect with people right. that feel the same way, and not everybody's gonna feel that way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the people yeah. who it doesn't connect with, they'll watch it and and complain about it for ten minutes and move on. No. That's it. <laughs> so that's just the way it is. Someone will make a three-part Your Music Sucks on my album. <laughs> oh, yeah. Satona Cast has a pretty interesting question. Whenever Roger Ebert went to the theater, he would always sit in, the, in a seat twice as far back as the screen is wide. So my question is, do you guys have a specific seat that you always sit in when you go to the theater? Is that seat at an angle or height which makes watching a movie more enjoyable somehow? Or does it not matter where you sit in the theater because it doesn't impact your experience? Oh, it matters. The middle. I always That's pick it, the matters. direct middle. Yeah, I'm the same. <laughs> yeah, I try to get centered. I try to have it like fill up my peripherals in a way. I'm in like row C or D, depending on the size of the screen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If it's Cinerama, you have to be like toward the front uh, middle. Otherwise, it sucks. <laughs> Depending on the movie, I might sacrifice a bit of my uh, viewing uh, ideal angle. So in Serenity, the Matthew McConaughey one that I walked into knowing that it would be a gigantic piece of shit and it would be really funny. (laughs) Get my seats. Turns out that there's not a lot of people in the theater. There's nobody really sitting in the like super front rows. And so in a movie like that, I move closer to the front, so if I'm giggling, <laughs> I'm not ruining anybody else's experience. Sometimes I'll just try mm-hmm. to try to like put myself a little bit further away from people. So like if I'm you know trying my best to contain my laughter at a movie, and you know there's other people that are trying to enjoy it, then I don't mm-hmm. have to be near them and ruin their experience. So yeah, that would be my exception. No, that's a good call. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. Yep. <laughs> that's that. <laughs> okay. Let's go to one from. Svartil Nagaroth. I probably butchered that. I'm sorry. This is a, an interesting one. Given that you three are long term cinephiles, do you ever wonder if your experienced criticism alien- alienates you from the majority of casual moviegoers simply because of your extended exposure and thus cynicism towards a wide variety of film and the industry that surrounds it? For example, when YMS might cry, just don't think about it to highlight contrived or contradictory plot logic. That may be exactly what a mainstream audience intends to do. Enjoy the spectacle and superficial escapism of the film without exerting the required disbelief or willpower to ask themselves why the scene they're watching would likely not make sense. Or when you note that Marvel characters have upcoming movie deals despite being deceased in-universe, but a casual Marvel fan would simply not have cared to have done that research. Would or do you try to see the films you watch in the untrained eyes of a mainstream audience member who might have only had 
had the chance to attend a cinema a few times a year, as opposed to individuals who have extensive industry knowledge. Oof. That's a long question. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah that's sure. a very long one. It's an interesting question. That that's a that's a reasonable statement to make. I think that uh, if a trope really bothers you, if it, if if there's something that every movie does and you're pissed off for a movie not being original and just resorting to this checklist of of formulas and tropes, that would bother someone who's seen other movies. But if it's the first movie you've ever seen, it's you're not going to know that it's a trope. So, yeah, I mean, like, that's an exaggeration, but that, that's essentially what it boils down to. Not to say that every mo opinion I have on a movie or, you know, being bothered by tropes in movies is correct or anything. It's just a matter of perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, f for, for me, I, I take it more as I think it's kind of a pitfall to try and review movies from other people's perspectives. Right. Like for me, it's like yeah, when I'm reviewing a I movie, totally it's my experience. It's only my experience. And that's all I can talk about. And you know, people take away what they want to from that. Uh, it's like mm -hmm. that argument when people try to say, oh, it's just a kid's movie or whatever. It's like, well, I'm not a kid. I can't possibly talk about, you know, what a kid might like because kids, they like anything. You can just put anything on the fucking screen and they'll enjoy it. So yeah. like, that kind of thinking doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, I love that it's argument It's like, oh, they, they just don't know what they're missing out on. <laughs> it's like yeah so i i love the craft of filmmaking and i judge it on those merits basically that's how i judge everything just the the yeah. craft of it how well made is it and whether it's made for a kid or an adult or whatever i demand the movie respects the audience and it does its best to tell a story and and have a vision that's consistent it doesn't matter what it is it could be fucking shazam Shazam is an entertaining movie for mainstream audiences, and it's great for what it is. I wouldn't give it five stars, but, like, we should compare that to fucking Batman vs. Superman or Suicide Squad or any giant piece of shit. And it's like, oh, just don't judge it because just don't think about it. Don't think about it. It's just, it's like, yeah, if you don't think about it, probably it's fine. But why the fuck would I watch a movie like that? I and want to go into a movie, a movie thinking like about it. I love thinking about movies. That's yeah. my experience. I love thinking about it too. And most people like thinking about it. And most people should think about film because it's an art. <laughs> and so it's like, oh, so we'll just throw some shit out to the audience and they don't have to think. It's like, no, don't do that. That's horrible. Mm -hmm. it's, it's making people stupider. My favorite films are ones that get better the more I think about it. The ones that I can watch yeah. more than once and experience new things watching it. My least favorite films yeah. are the ones that get worse when you think about it, you know, where, where things make less sense and there's less to appreciate. You can say the same thing uh, as you can about Synecdoche, New York, towards like a Neil Breen film. You know, the more times I watch Fateful Findings, <laughs> there's more, more things to pick up. It's, it's better every yeah. time I think about it, you know? So I, 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 like, I, like, uh, I like having a lot of meat. I like having... Uh, Something I can chew on, experience, yeah, experiencing a about. film. Yeah. But we also respect that people don't watch films the same way we do. Some people mm -hmm. just want to watch like a Disney animated movie because they have other stuff to worry about in life. And they just want to enjoy it. They don't want to watch a movie like Gene Dillman or whatever. I don't think most <laughs> but, people would want to watch the movie I recommended. <laughs> it's no. really out there. <laughs> that's, but that's no fine. Way. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. You're but there is like an audience for that. <laughs> Watching it. And for the people who connect with us, or for me, in my opinions, that's, you know, that's just what we do. Mm -hmm. Clearly, a lot of people agree with what we say. And it's important to be able to hear someone's perspective and at least be able to say, you know what? I disagree with you, but I understand why you feel the way you do. And that's how I try to make my right. reviews. And that makes is, film. Is in a way that where makes film better too. someone can understand where I'm coming from, even if they don't agree with me. Because otherwise, mm -hmm. what's the point? You're just preaching to the choir. Yeah, when you have multiple perspectives on a film, it makes it more interesting. <laughs> just just more interesting, the, the, the art itself, the film itself, it makes it a more interesting piece. Yeah, you can't disregard yeah. at the same time what the, how these people feel about the film, because, you know, there's a reason films like Fast and Furious and Transformers and all the Marvel movies and stuff, they make a ton of money. They make more money than every other type of movie out there. And it's because, you yeah. know, people just like basic escapism. They like seeing giant sharks eat people and just stupid stuff like that because it's just the enjoyment of the, like, excessive nature of it all. It's just you don't have to think about your daily routine for a little bit and you can just go and 
to another world for a minute. So that's enough for some people. And that's fine. Yeah. I mean, films are a consumable product, you know. It's not mm-hmm. just about art yeah. when you talk yeah. about the greater scheme of what cinema is. The movies that make the most money are yeah, like factory movies. You know, designed yeah. to appeal to <laughs> the there widest is artistry audience, to them. audience possible. Mm-hmm. There are always going to be factory movies. That's not that's not going to go away. Oh, what I would like is those factory movies to be made by creative people who respect the audience and go, okay, we can make a Shazam movie and it'll make a billion dollars, but let's actually put something into it. Let's let's you know try and put put some of ourselves mm-hmm. into it. Yeah. And there's a clear difference between a movie like that and a movie like, oof, uh, Catwoman. Justice League. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Justice League. Justice League's a great example. Yeah. Of literally mm-hmm. a factory made movie, like tons of producers, no tone, yeah. just a, a mess. I wanna, I wanna see someone's voice in a film. I wanna see something made by mm-hmm. a person, not made by a factory, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Or voices, you know, because there's not just one voice in the yeah. film. There's the there's the yeah, costume people making stuff. There's but the a cinematographer, voice, even if it's a combined yeah. a voice voice, mm-hmm. a singular vision that all comes together, yeah. mm-hmm. some kind of cohesion to like a project. That's clearly yeah. been thought through, yeah. And I think you can judge that. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Yeah. Good question. Cool. That was an awesome question. Good question, yeah. Game Ron WV says, "My question is, what the what is the point in using a five star review system if you still rate things in half stars as well? At what point? At that point, you might as well just use a ten point system." Yeah. So for for me. I don't know if you guys agree with this, but I think a three out of five stars is viewed differently than a six out of ten is. Yeah. I think that's and that's the main reason um, that I, I I go more towards the star thing. I think it I think it does people treat it differently. I think people see a three star I, I and they're know. like <laughs> Yeah, I couldn't I even comment on this because I have no idea. <laughs> I see them as the same. I just like the five I like the five star rating system. I don't use the half stars, but I've never thought of a six out of ten or three star as different in my head. I don't know. I <laughs> guess that's say. just a me thing then. It's just a me yeah, thing because I remember I remember looking yeah, at maybe. like Empire Film Magazine or whatever and seeing you know movies getting three out of five stars and being like oh I might see that. But then if you see a movie on Metacritic only just get a sixty, it might be more like mm-hmm. yeah, probably gonna give that. Yeah, a maybe miss. your brain reads it differently. Yeah. Also, there's there's some of the big critics who use like four stars. I was about like to Roger say. Ebert.com, yeah. They use the four star system. Yeah. So, so three is like seventy five percent. Three stars on that looks great. Yeah. Sixty. Yeah. I mean, at the mm-hmm. end of the day, it doesn't really you know it doesn't really matter that much. No. But I mostly just use the star thing because I use Letterbox, so and it has stars, so whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it roughly says what you thought of the film. I thought it was good. No, I thought it yeah. was bad. <laughs> like a three yeah. out of five is like, oh, I thought it was pretty good. Oh, we have a good question here from Bloomer467. Hey, boys, I just wanted to hear your thoughts on an extremely polarizing person, Seth MacFarlane. What are your opinions of his work, him as a person, his Oscar hosting, and do you think he has genuine talent? Seth MacFarlane, everybody, the family guy himself. Yeah. He, he's, uh, he does a lot, and yeah. sometimes it's good. That's, I think that's the thing. He does too much. I think he's very talented. But he he's trying to be everything, <laughs> you know. Yeah. <laughs> like like that's what I get like, from him. Do you like any of his movies? No. No. We'll see, I, I like Ted. Two, okay. He's got the two Ted movies and that Western, which is so embarrassingly bad that I think that, everyone yeah, wants to forget awful. about it. I couldn't. That's one of the worst I couldn't movies sit I've ever through seen. Ted. I start. I I was like ten minutes through it and I shut it off. So mm-hmm. didn't even yeah, try I, with I the like thousand ways movies. to die in the West. The trailer said enough. I can't believe people were excited for that movie. I mean, <laughs> people weren't excited for it. Yeah, it they were. The, the people, there were people that, <laughs> at least on I the internet, maybe it was Seth all McFarlane. trolls. Maybe it was all bots. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, well, yeah, Seth MacFarlane fans. Yeah. yeah. He has a sizable fan well, like base. There's guy, a lot of people who love the Orville. So yeah. they, they think the Orville's better than that new Star Trek show. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of people that <laughs> a love A lot of them. I just, I'm mm-hmm. not really entertained by him at all. I think that he does great, like, voice acting. That's probably what he does best. Yeah, in my that's what I was going to say. Like, he yeah. does a lot of different characters very well. Great voice actor. But otherwise... He's great in Hellboy 2. Uh, where, when was he in that? Oh, was he the... He was that, he the, was that weird smoke oh, nice. creature yeah. guy. 
Yeah. yeah. Okay. So he has been in like some decent stuff, and I much prefer him as a voice actor than like a joke writer or yeah. a director. I see, think his directing is really yeah, bland. Yeah, I would like to I see him he's... work with a director who can like guide him, like he, like in yeah. Hellboy too, because it's exactly, just yeah. when you leave him to his own devices, it's like a disaster. Because he's he's yeah, a singer, he's a, a dancer, humor, he's a voice actor, he's an actor. He's he like does everything, and it's like, all right, dude, <laughs> it's you, you don't do everything well though. <laughs> Yeah, like his his lead performance in that western, he clearly had no clue how bad of a leading man he would yeah. be. Because oh it's my awful. lord, he has no charisma, and it's like I don't blame him because he's writing and directing the movie too, and he's working on mm -hmm. ten other shows. But holy fuck, why didn't you just get an actor to be in it? Who else can you blame if not him though? Yeah, it's his yeah. fault because he he's so up his own <laughs> ass. He's like, I it have to do everything. I have to write every joke. I have to be in it. It's like, no, you don't. Yeah, yeah. Family Guy was funny to me when I was younger, and then even when I was younger, as soon as they came back from being canceled, I thought that they just weren't that funny anymore. Mm. Yeah, I like the Brian death scene. That's good. Ugh, but apart yeah. from that, <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus. Yeah, I don't find okay, it funny. Let's go to one from uh, yeah. Ridlo Bazinga has a question for us. I can't. We might have answered this before. I can't remember though. But it, 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 I was encouraged by the return of Game of Thrones to pick this question. Do you guys think that an overabundance of sex sequences can ruin an otherwise excellent movie or TV show? Sorry to sound like some fucking mum, but that's the question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mum no. is mom, by the way. Depends on the work again. It. Yeah. The the world of Game of Thrones is permeated with like sex and violence. That's what makes it such. Uh, that's what makes it stand out in fantasy. Is that it has those elements, which most fantasy doesn't, in such yeah. excessive amounts. They did, right? They did go a bit far sometimes in Game of Thrones. There was this one point where it's like going through keyholes, and it's like seeing all the various sex acts that that are going mm -hmm. on behind, and and it and it goes to the point of like comedy because it's like a guy, a peeping tom, who's like looking through. And watching yeah. people in like a whorehouse, but then it like zooms out and he's like being sucked off while while watching. And it's just like, come on, guys, it's just so silly. That's that's it's... the way Game of Thrones is. I don't see anything wrong with sexuality or nudity in movies. Yeah, it depends it on depends. what it is. And as how long it as it's not, you know. It, yeah, and it depends on the context too. Like, it, is the actress and actor okay with this, or is this like gratuitous and wrong? Uh, Blue is the warmest is color. Like a yeah, it's dumb... the purpose. Oh, yeah. Well, we can argue about the, the artistic. Well, I, I mean, the actresses the themselves so felt, long. said that they felt like they were abused. <laughs> they oh came yeah, out, like That's after the movie, said. being Who's like, we so? felt like porn stars. Blue is the warmest color. Oh, okay, yeah. it was a pretty, it was a pretty gratuitous sex scene. It was really weird. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was, it was like, okay, this movie's not for lesbians anymore. This is for straight men. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's just kind of a gut feeling, isn't it? Yeah, it, it depends or like a done. horror movie from the '80s, like when one of them takes off yeah. their tops. You're like, yeah, this is just gratuitous nudity, because so mm -hmm. the audience can cheer. Right? Yeah, it's like, yeah. why why do you need that in your movie? You don't really. It really depends. Don't look now had tons of nudity, and it was to show how intimate yeah. the couple was, how they were a real couple, a and I love that. Yeah, there's yeah. intention behind it. Yeah, not not like Watchmen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, it, that's excessive. a great example of like a pointless yeah. one. That it has doesn't fit. What well, actually makes the movie worse? Yeah. It's like, why the fuck <laughs> yeah. is this in the movie? What? We don't need this. <laughs> and then in a Gaspar Noé film, it's like, you kind of just expect it. So it's fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gaspar yeah. Noé, it's so much, it's like gross. <laughs> it's not even hot. Like, I get no pornographic pleasure or anything from that shit. It's like yeah. horrific. It's so hardcore. Yeah. I, I don't understand how anyone could be uh, turned on by that. <laughs> I assume that's what people have issue with in terms of nudity in movies is that like people take it as pornography. Well, yeah, but that's the thing too. Purpose, is like sometimes then it's fine. Sometimes movies do kind of turn into pornography, and there's nothing wrong with pornography as a concept. But then you're kind of just alienating no. your audience based on what their sexual preferences are, which you can't really change. <laughs> Nobody decides, so it's like, oh, okay, yeah. you know, like. Being a gay dude sitting in a movie, yeah. and it's like, uh, am I supposed to have a boner now? Like, what if there's nothing else that the scene is offering? <laughs> you might as well just be showing me nothing. You might as well be showing me a chair. You know, if, mm -hmm. if you're not attracted to it, and yeah. the only thing you could possibly get out of it is a boner, then the movie's worse. Mm -hmm. 
But sex yeah. is also just a part of life. And if a movie's going to show it, show it all the way. Exactly. You know, no half measures. Yeah. Nothing wrong with <laughs> yeah. showing sex or nudity. <laughs> Nothing. It's just whether or not yeah. it has more to offer than just, hey, that's hot. Because then the movie yeah, just feels like stupid. Yeah, some kind of purpose. Right. Yeah. Yeah. A lot, of, a lot of shitty, cheesy horror movies do that. Mm-hmm. Just have sex mm-hmm. scenes, yeah, for the sake of having there was a sex that, scene. Uh, there was that movie called Mum and Dad with Nicolas Cage, uh, <laughs> directed by one of the directors oh, yeah. of Crank. Uh, it was not very good. There's mm-hmm. just this part in the movie where, like, all of a sudden, doesn't add anything to the movie. It's like, we're going to cut to the mom character. She's doing her yoga workout. And just all these, like, completely unnecessary, like, butt and tit shots of just, like, I'm getting nothing <laughs> yeah. out of this right now. It's really just like, why Why is this in the movie? I thought I was watching like a horror movie. You know, it felt like I was watching the Call <laughs> On Me music video. <laughs> but then the Crank movies have some pretty funny examples Ex- of sex scenes. Yeah, but it, scenes, it though, helps for it. Comedic purposes. Yeah, well, they're it's doing it like, for comedy. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Like, that's, yeah. what, that's what I mean. It adds to the movie. Yeah. yeah. For right. sure. I don't think that that's they're, something they're just being in the movie They're fucking on a horse track. Is... <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, then, and then in something like... And then a like, horse uh, jumps over them and they see a horse cock. And then in something like Under the Silver Lake... You know, a lot of people complained about the sexual aspects of that film, but it really does add to the movie. It's it's commentary, you know. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's talking about. Totally. It's important to that character Hollywood. as well. It's the way LA is. Yeah. yeah, it's talking about audience members and the perversion of of people watching these films and and nerd culture and mm-hmm. all that. So, mm-hmm. you know, if yeah. it has a point to it, yeah. then it's great. Damn straight. Damn straight. Flip Tricky has one. What world events do you think have had the most impact on cinema as an art form? I think he means the biggest impact, but whatever, you know what he means. World uh, events, not not events in cinema. Okay. Yeah, like uh, world events that have impacted cinema. The Holocaust. You know, something like 9 11. We got a, yeah, a, a lot Holocaust. of Holocaust yeah, movies. 9 11. 9 11 for sure. I reckon Donald Trump being president <laughs> has had a pretty big impact on just art yeah. as a whole. Yeah, it has. It's hard to escape it in terms of like music mm-hmm. and you know villains in movies being inspired right. by Donald Trump and stuff like that. The entire ending yeah, of totally Lilo right and Stitch that. was changed because of nine eleven. Yeah, mm-hmm. did you see the yeah, original we were about the, scene? the other day? It's like on YouTube. No, I, I heard about it. This, was like a plane crashing into a building, and they changed it to a mountain, right? Yeah, they changed the entire setting. Really? Mm-hmm. And then there's movies that like yeah. had to delay their release dates. Like uh, there well, was took, an Arnold yeah. Schwarzenegger yeah. movie that had mm-hmm. to had to be delayed because they were like, "Uh oh, it's about terrorists." What about yeah, Lord of the Rings? <laughs> the two the two towers Uh-oh. is the name of the second movie, yeah. and it came out in what two thousand and two. Yeah, Spider Man. The, the first it, ad for it had the the World Trade Center in it too. Yeah, he landed. They on got it, rid of that they? in the movie. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's definitely an impact there. And then, I don't know, if you want to call China's censorship laws world events, because that has an impact on Disney movies, for sure. Mm-hmm. That's true, yeah. No ghosts, no gays. Well, the civil rights movement, civil yeah. rights movement, 100%. Before that, there were no black people in film at all. And then they started getting nominated for Oscars, and they got their old subgenres, and yeah, they, they kind of, black film became a thing mm-hmm. <laughs> because of that. Yeah, yeah I mean, so that's the, a huge thing. The world around us shapes the art that we create. Art is a reflection of life and vice versa. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it makes sense. Exactly. Yeah. World War II probably affected of cinema a lot. A yeah. lot of escapism. Every, every war. A lot of more upbeat, uh, yeah, patriotic <laughs> films. And then Vietnam did the exact opposite where we got films about how flawed we are and uh, how fucked the system is and the government is. Yeah. The invention of cell phones do that. affected horror movies. The invention of cell phones. <laughs> yeah. It affected I got every no signal. Movie, basically. <laughs> the streaming. Streaming's a huge event in film. Because now I feel cinema is totally different. Most people don't go to this the theater as much as they used to because of that. And film changes as a result. Calm down, Steven Spielberg. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm not Steven. saying it's a bad thing, it's just the way it is. Yeah. It's it, it's what happens. Me, yeah, you gotta adapt. Mm-hmm. And now he's doing fucking Disney Plus, right? So he can. Oh, what a fucking fuck asshole! Himself. Is he? <laughs> is he actually? Is he, is right? He actually... Y- yeah, he is. What What's the he fuck? What a hypocrite! He's doing something. Steven Spielberg, Disney Plus. Let me look it up. Oh, uh, so Steven Spielberg is actually helping Apple launch a new streaming service. So I'm guessing he's going to be doing like content for that, right? That's funny. So what the fuck? 
<laughs> yeah. yeah cool so one. he was just going off a month ago about how Netflix is the worst thing ever. Wow. Okay. Yikes. <laughs> Ambient Co. has one for us who says, with Neon Genesis Evangelion coming to Netflix, have any of you guys seen this series and, a ho and as a whole, what are your thoughts on it? I have no have idea seen this? what that no. is. So, no. <laughs> okay. It's like a really famous <laughs> anime that I know, yeah, I know everyone loves. Is. Yeah, I've heard of it, but... Yeah. Will you guys watch it if it comes to Netflix? <laughs> sure. I don't know. There's so <laughs> many things on my I've watch list. The only anime I've seen is Akira and, and Devil Man Crybaby. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> you like Death Note, don't you, Adam? I love Death Note. Yeah, I, I really like Death Note, yeah. too. I also watched Devil Man Crybaby. It was fun. Yeah, it was. Okay. Well, our last question was a bit of a dud, but I'm sure the comments will be about even <laughs> Gelly and why we should watch it, but yeah. skidoosh. That's all they can say to skidoosh. that one. Mm. Skidoosh. All right. Well, uh, I guess we have a recommendation. Yeah. From who? It is you, Ralph, right? Yeah, you said it, not me. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna lighten everything up a bit here. Uh, this is Do a it. film we've all seen, I, I believe, okay. and I would like us to all watch it again, reconsider it with a new lens, watch okay. it more maturely, and just watch it as like a filmmaker making his magnum opus. So what I'm gonna recommend is Star Wars Episode Three, Revenge of the Sith. We're gonna talk about it. Okay. Episode that three. That good. Okay. Star That's Wars Episode Three. Revenge of the Sith. <laughs> okay. That's, okay, that's a okay. great pick. Let's okay. do it. Okay, okay we're going to talk yeah. about it. Let's uh, do it. My current rating on IMDb is two. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see if that changes. It's been a while. <laughs> we will. It has been a while. It has been a while. It's been a while for me, too. And the fan, this is the one the fans consider, like, the underrated kind of masterpiece one. Yeah. It's, this is a yeah, good one. So this and will listen, be I'm going to go into it with fresh new eyes. I haven't seen it in a few years, and I'm going to give it a chance. Oh, you got your eyes replaced. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> I got contacts. So stupid. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, good point. All right. If uh, any of you listening don't want the movie spoiled... Um, Watch it before we uh, talk about it on the next uh, episode in two weeks from now. If you'd like to support mm -hmm. the show, $2 a month, sardonicast.com. You'll get to listen to these episodes early as they're edited. Also, $2 a month on patreon.com slash sardonicast. We also have merch, and I think the link should be working now. It yep. was Look incorporated in into, yeah, we changed the descriptions. It's a working link, so merch is all good. Yeah. Damn, yeah. Thank yeah. you all uh, for listening, and uh, I, I hope you uh, have fun doing chores around your home until the end yeah, of eternity. Be sure to of life. I hope be you sure to watch snap. episode three while you're doing those chores. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that, that could be a way to do it. No, I'll give it a serious yeah. watch. We'll no, see. No, no, no. Yeah, lights <laughs> down, nice theater. Yeah, I so might if you can get it screened in a theater. I I'm if I if I have time I might try to watch the other uh, the other two but we'll see. Oh yeah, you guys the whole should try trilogy. Yeah. Just yeah, try not to let it them. ruin your your perception on three. Okay. Because I do it's think three movie. is better. Okay. Than one and two, uh, it's considerably. Even though I don't like any of them from what I remember. <laughs> so. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you all for listening. Sure. Bye bye. Thanks everybody. Yeah, thanks. Bye. bye.